Hey, what's up? Welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 3, Episode 21. Today we're talking Body Melt from 1993, directed by Philip Brophy. I'm Joel Escola. Uh, I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor the Fetal Tentacle McGraw. And I'm special guest Jenna Fryer. Welcome to the dumpster. The first phase is hallucinogenic. The second phase is glandular. The third phase is... Ah! Ah! I am already corpsing over here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fucking double whammy. Connor, I, I just about uh, almost clenched my jaw in half, and then Jenna comes in with the fucking banger right after. <laughs> yep. Oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, this is the final episode for our barbecue month, and we have a very special guest with us today, Jenna Fryer. How you doing, Jenna? I'm good. How are you guys? Uh, fantastical. I mean, tastical. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to let you rap about yourself a little bit, but I just want to introduce you because uh, Jenna and I first met on uh, Swamp Zombies 2, an independent film by Len Kabazinski uh, that I was doing makeup effects for. And, um, yeah, we've been uh, friends uh, since then. Yeah, I got familiar with him through uh, Rather Media and um, uh, Best of the Worst and stuff like that. Yeah, Jenna works a, a bunch with him, and she does, geez, uh, everything. Um after effects composition, uh, uh, special effects, uh, acting, uh, even a little bit of composing. Is that, am I correct? Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I did not know how to compose until that movie, and now I do. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, you guys just wrapped a film not too long ago. I believe it was Hellcat's Revenge that you were in? Yes, Hellcat's Revenge 2, Dead Man's Hand. Ooh. There it is, nice. Um, I guess I just... Talked about your stuff for you, but hey, <laughs> let us know <laughs> what else is going on, or, or tell us tell us more about that, please. I'm gonna let you talk about yourself, but first, let me do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry, kind of jump the gun a little bit. I mean, you pretty much said, you know, what I've been what I've been doing and what I've been up to. I also edited um, an old movie of his, which was so much fun. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I also edited Blood Mercury not too long ago, and uh, that was my first time editing, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, learned a lot. Yeah, that's awesome. But um, yeah, I'm going to be acting in his next movie called Pact of Vengeance. That was supposed to be this summer, but now it's um, going to next summer, and that's going to have uh, Samurai Cop in it, which I'm really excited for. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh. That's amazing. So, yeah. That's about it. Very cool. Well, that's more exciting than my life, where I just get yelled at by the public and get <laughs> peed on by animals all the time. <laughs> Uh, real quick, did you want to talk about, uh, like, powerlifting and stuff? Um, uh, yeah, it's actually kind of interesting because when I was watching this, when I was watching this movie, I'm like, I was noticing, so I'm in the fitness industry as well. Mm -hmm. They have, like, this whole thing about, uh, these vitamins, like, being really bad for you and how it has, like, a lot of effects on the body, which is really funny because in, in Australia, vitamins are heavily regulated, supplements are regulated. They have like a whole department for that, uh, which is what I really? learned. Yeah. And we learn in um, the fitness industry that in the U.S. there is no regulation whatsoever with uh, vitamins and supplements. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, FDA. Appreciate it. Yeah. Just pop whatever we're selling you. It's, it's definitely not bad for you at all. Wink, wink. There's a little bit of lead in it. It's fine. It ain't going to hurt you. I've come across that bit just from being a wrestling fan for so long and, like, digging into that. Like, those dudes are on so much weird shit. <laughs> I mean, their dicks will probably explode at one point, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get uh, into the... Uh, proverbial boogers and, and guts and all kinds of gross, <laughs> disgusting things in this film. Not the meat and potatoes this week, folks. Boogers and guts and puke. Not the meat and potatoes. The entrails of this film. <laughs> yeah. So many boogers. Oh, man, yeah. 
Uh, I am not a booger guy, by the way. We'll get into that. This movie and Street Trash are very much like, wow, you can just watch this in one afternoon and never eat again. <laughs> yeah. In in fact, I'm wearing my Street Trash uh, t-shirt from Cavity <laughs> Colors at this very moment. <laughs> uh, specifically this film, because there's a lot of phlegmy booger. We'll, we'll get to it. But I believe, do we have any Patreon questions for this episode? Yes, we do. We do. All right. Well, let's... Uh... I don't know why I answered you like that, but <laughs> here they are. I don't know why I asked you like that, so... Here's your prize. Uh, you know, we're working towards that gig as the next host of Price is Right, clearly. Um, you know, uninvited cat screaming in the background. We talked about it. Go back and listen to the episode. <laughs> so our first question, and Jenna, uh, I think you can chime in on any of these. I don't think they're specific to us. All right. Yes, please participate. We have one from Hunter Davenport, and he says, What do you think Gary Busey's favorite food is? <laughs> <laughs> I just see Gary... Like, if you put... God damn it, Hunter. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm going to answer first. I'm going to say, uh, you know, deep fried werewolf uh, meat. <laughs> Chopping up that priest after the end of a silver bullet and just throwing it on the grill. I think that sounds about right. It could be. Like, I just see Gary, like, in front of, like, a smorgasbord of stuff. And he's just like, piss on the chicken, piss on the turkey, <laughs> piss on the mashed potatoes. Like, I don't know. Um... Gary Busey, what's his favorite food? Maybe grilled cheese and tomato soup? Hmm. He looks like one of those kinds of guys, right? He gets cozy with his blanket. (laughs) You picked the most plain thing in the world. Because he's so extreme in everything else. It's hard to do a visual, obviously, on a podcast, but I could just see him sitting at the table saying, yeah, grilled cheese. There's just something about it. You know, you take the cheese, you you know, the grilled cheese, and you you break it in half, and you dip it in the tomato soup. I mean, let's talk about cheese. And, uh... You know, it, it absorbs the tomato soup. And, you know, there's the uh, combination of uh, flavors. And I, I don't even know what this voice is, but I guess this is what I think Gary Busey sounds like. <laughs> he completely changes his voice, too, for it. He's like, you see the cheese? It uh, it, it transcends uh, life and, and thoughts. And you dip it in the tomato soup, and then you have a bite of it, and, and you, you transcend. Yeah. Um, I think he makes a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, cuts the crust off, and then hurls the sandwich into the garbage and ferociously eats the crust. <laughs> <laughs> Just goes, Gary Busey. <laughs> Gary B- Lance, his catchphrase is his own name? Yeah. <laughs> Gary Busey. He definitely just eats boogers. That's his favorite food, <laughs> is boogers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's got a jar full of them. Boogers. Now let's break it down. Now, B... B is for the best thing in the world. O. O is for absolutely... <laughs> I have no idea. Ask Gary Busey to do it. G for the good stuff. O is for... Oh, that's a booger. <laughs> the other O is for... Oh, it's delicious. <laughs> God bless Gary Busey. The man was in Lethal Weapon. G for great. Greatness from the, from the mucus. E, excellent. Excellent... Boogers. <laughs> really reductive, Gary. What's R? R- uh, really good boogers. <laughs> really good. <laughs> he really put some thought into this one. Uh, I sure didn't. Sorry. Our next question from Nick Lowry. And this is a, uh, this will make sense in a second, uh, but he's uh, referring to something that comes up on this show often, and it'll make sense shortly. He says, could Umbrella be tied to the substance used in this film? Oh. <sighs> You bet. Yeah, totally. Are you kidding me? Like, this looks like one of those... What the fuck was that company they tried hiding as in Resident Evil 5? Oh, uh... uh, Beats the shit out of me, man. Ah, shit, man. I forgot what it is. (laughs) Bromella. Not InGen. (laughs) Yeah, it's like something that's like... It it, it might as well be called Not Umbrella. It's just that kind of, like, vagueness. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, well, it's kind of... We're kind of doing what Umbrella's doing, and we're kind of doing what they were doing in Mexico with Las Plagas, but I don't know. We'll just call it something else. But we're different people! Different regimes. But we're, we're different. These are fossils in Africa instead. They just swap the colors of the black and the red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the pills that they eat instead of their, you know, instead of green and yellow, they're red and red and black. <laughs> <laughs> the BA. Oh wait, that never mind. That's that's the Chris's thing. We're the Rain Stopper Company. We're not Umbrella. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if Umbrella's been involved with. Uh, Lawnmower Man and uh, the House of the Dead, most likely. Uh, I think this kind of lines up. Like, you know, is is what is what is the name of this place called again? Villa. Oh, I. It's it's just like 
Throughout the whole film, I was like, I don't know, Vindaloo, Villanueva, where the fuck this place is called? <laughs> Villanova. Well, my point is, I think this place is a fucking shell company for Umbrella. That they likely abandoned it in an afternoon because of how south this goes and how quickly it goes. It's called Yantabula, is what it's called. Well, I was specifically talking about... Oh, you mean the actual company? Yeah, v Vimoville. Vimoville, yeah. That shell company for Umbrella, that's what I'm saying, Nick. Yeah. Which both sound like the most cartoony Australian bullshit I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> it's Vimoville! Yeah. Yantabula. <laughs> well, you know, when we get into the movie, there's an acronym. I was I was literally reading the sign backwards to see like, are they doing like some <laughs> troll two thing, like oh. goblin spelled backwards? But no, <laughs> didn't make sense backwards. <laughs> <laughs> they drop that fucking shit right towards the end of the film of what that actually means, but we'll get to it. Right, yeah, yeah. On a computer screen, specifically. On a computer screen, yeah. I guess I missed that. Yeah, I missed that, too. It's not called that at all. You have to literally be, like, looking for it. Yeah, I had to pause it to write it down. Ooh. Mmm. Little Easter egg here. <laughs> But I absolutely think that, you, you know, the big difference here, though, with Umbrella and this company is Umbrella was intentionally turning people into zombies, and this company just, uh, they fucked up the ingredients. Uh, yeah, but they kind of were intentionally fucking with people. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. When you quietly deliver uh, experimental <laughs> drugs to people? Sure. Um, I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. He here's here's the problem here. Like, an umbrella, the left hand always knew what the right hand was doing to some extent, and with this company, they're just like, what do you mean you did that? Well, not according to all those journals, because whenever you're walking through a fucking Resident Evil game, it's like, yeah, I was experimenting on this dog, but I don't know why the fuck it turned into a zombie. Well, those are the scientists. They weren't, they weren't keyed in on the actual plan. It's the same difference, though. They're like, we worked on a skinless ape that fucking grew fangs and, and giant fingernails. Yeah, but an umbrella scientist is just a person who hasn't become a zombie yet. <laughs> True. <laughs> He's hiding in your closet. They're pre-zombies. Proto-zombies, if you will. Yeah. Um, unless anybody else has anything else to add to that. The answer is yes. For sure, really. <laughs> <laughs> Vehemently, yes. Got one more question for Patreon from Dustin Elkins. And this is a uh, a bit of a loaded question, I guess. Uh, when is it not from him? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> he knows how to bring the heat, right? <laughs> when's, when's it's not, yeah. <laughs> he, uh, he goes, who do you guys think is the best movie villain of all time? Holy shit. <sighs> I'm just going to go out there and steal everybody's thunder and just say Darth Vader before anybody else gets the chance to. You can have him. Like, a quick answer is that, because, I mean, like, what else is there to fucking say about Darth Vader? His, like, legacy as a villain just keeps growing with like, more content, and I think he's one of the only characters that's been mostly unaffected by how big the series has gotten, because it seems to only get more intriguing. Mm. Oh, well, as long as you separate Anakin <laughs> from Vader, sure. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, even, like, I think even, like, the stuff that comes later on makes that a little more bearable? Uh, maybe. Okay. But, oh, yeah, holy shit. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Jareth the Goblin King for me. Hmm. David Bowie himself. The King himself. That's one of my favorite villains, because he's essentially you right right you know what i mean like he with a cop piece with a cop piece. well yeah let's uh let's not talk about what i do after the show but <laughs> <laughs> uh no i just you know he he is basically the the incarnate of he's your own worst enemy which is yourself i feel like a lot of the times and he's he's holding you you're holding yourself back but in, but he is the personification of that part of your psyche in my opinion at least that's what i take away from it sure i'm gonna go with something that's very contemporary but i think he was done so well that you can't really make too much of a fuss about it and i'm gonna say thanos because mm. one the performance from josh brolin is amazing because he it's it transcends it transcends the idea that he's a purple cgi man yes he's so committed to this idea that's lunacy on paper it's completely it's he's the mad titan for a reason but he's so married and committed and will, you know, will do anything to accomplish this. It, like, you can't argue with him. And there's no logical thing you can throw at him. And he's like, no, this is what must be done. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you know, before Endgame, he commits an act of genocide I've never seen on screen before. And it's so effective that, like, people fucking named their kids Thanos, which is not a good idea at all. Wait, but what? <laughs> what? That sounds like wor the world. <laughs> God. <laughs> that sounds like life. But yeah, like he's compelling. He's interesting. He has a he has a moral compass. Like 
him, the scene with him and Gamora is just <laughs> gut wrenching. Mm. But like, I also agree with Sean's and Darth Vader because like, God, just fucking his he envelops everything. I mean, Vader's kind of my cop out answer. My actual answer is Anton Shigar from Ol- No Country for Old Men. Well, there you Ooh, go. That's a good one too. Because that guy is just fucking intimidating from frame one to the to his last scene. Yeah, and he's just nothing but cold menace from start to finish. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. that whole that whole scene with the guy at the convenience store where he's telling him to call it. Yeah. Like, holy shit, is that is that a, a great scene? At no point does that personality crack. No. Like, he is just dominant in every single sequence he's in. And, uh, you know, he kills uh, he kills the bartender, so he gets extra brownie points from me. <laughs> Listen, man, nobody's fucking killing me. I am eternal. I'll just pop back up and there, pop up funny. What 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 if, uh, a- 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 Mr. Shigar, what, what if I pay you what they paid me so that you don't kill me? No? How about this? You look at my fucking pop-up funny, take a drink, and then walk your ass right out that door. What do you say? <laughs> Blam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the second he gets the funny out, he doesn't even think. Just fucking shoots him. Shoots him through the pop-up funny. Can I say M. Night Shyamalan? <laughs> yes. Can you be my favorite movie villain? You absolutely can. <laughs> Ruining endings since the- yeah, You know what's funny is that, like, your answer is both, it's, like, cheeky, but also because he's in all of his fucking movies. <laughs> Right. Yeah, he could be. I mean, lady in the water. <laughs> and he's the guy who murders Mel Gibson's wife and signs like uh, Yeah. No, I, I would actually say that it's probably um Daniel Plainview in There Will Be Blood. Ooh. Oh yeah. If if you can count him as the I think he is the villain, even though like you're kind of following him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, like look at Breaking Bad, he is the villain in that series, but he is also the main character. I think it's one of those cases where like when you follow somebody like that it's almost like you can feel for him and like they're justifying his shittiness no yeah 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 but towards the end like he just oh yeah well no yeah it's just like oh he's a sad horrible person it's kind of like that's that's kind of an unmade Shyamalan twist I guess (laughs) (laughs) the twist is that he just sucked the whole time Spoilers. <laughs> and, you know, if you, if you want to go with the M. Night Shyamalan answer, you know what we're going to say next, right? John Hurt? Uwe Boll oh. is coming out of the fucking uh, the, the dumpster to knock our blocks off. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he's still boxing people. Yeah, but yeah, but he's a he's a villain that we felled because, like, he's he got so angry with the movie like movie fans, he just fucked off to his restaurant and he said he's never making a movie ever again. So, like, who, who, who has the last laugh now, Uwe? He did! He has so much money! Who, who are you even kidding, Connor? He fucking <laughs> went all the way to the bank with that shit. Yeah. I know, yeah, as he has more money than I'll ever see in my life. Yeah. I really like Jen's answer because that guy is a vicious piece of shit throughout that entire film. Um, but yeah, you're, you're, you're stuck with him and it's kind of his journey, so you kind of, I guess you go with it and then by the end of it, you're like, he's beating a man to death with a pulling pin. Like, yeah. Right. And you like him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, the, that's the worst part is you kind of like him. Right. It, I guess that's what I was trying to say before. But you're like, he's a piece of shit. I think there's something manically enjoyable about that entire bowling bin sequence because like his like the performance leading up to it is just out of this fucking world where he's like, I have a straw and I take my straw over to your milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> I drink it up! I am the third revelation! (laughs) (laughs) We do have one more question that was not from Patreon, but was actually on our Instagram. Oh, okay. But from a patron, so it's kind of like a double hitter here, uh, from our friend Dalton. And he asks, and Jenna, you you can hop in here, but there's really only one answer for you, I'm sorry. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) He goes, "It'll you'll see. Since I've got some catching up to do, referring to the show in general, he says... What have been y'all's favorite episode to record this year? Hence why I said Jenna only gets one answer. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully this one. I hope by the end of it you're not thinking, God damn, what did I sign up for? I uh, I replied to that and I said, it's probably going to be this one because I'm really excited to talk about this movie. Ah. Can I say my favorite one I've listened to? Yeah. Love to hear it. Dragon Ball Evolutions. <laughs> oh, God help me. <laughs> because you guys did God's work. <laughs> I still have fucking nightmares from that. <laughs> That's a horror movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, I I still re- recall the day I was in a theater and I heard the phrase "I am Ozaru" and I just like all the life left my body and I just went limp in my chair. Like, oh Jesus Christ! Uh, I literally my my eyes started twitching at the at the sound of that word. <laughs> I could never make it past um Goku fighting the kids at this birthday party or whatever with his like over the car and I was like, nope, I'm not doing it. 
Right. When that one bully intimidates Goku by dumping out his own drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show him. Yeah, I'll show you. I don't need this beer. <laughs> Uh, oh wait okay so this is of all time like all three seasons what's uh, of this season specifically oh this year in particular this year he said maybe vampires might be my favorite oh man <laughs> that was a good one i'm not gonna lie i, I got a little mahogany doing that <laughs> Probably that or the Willies were my favorites, yeah. I laughed the hardest, I think, was it last week for Munchies? When you what was when were you rolling off those porn titles? That was on our last episode, Munchie. <laughs> oh my god. I came unglued at this phrase, the hills have thighs. Like that <laughs> fucking shattered me. <laughs> it's a Jim Winorski classic, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say Orca personally. Oh, that was a good one, too. Uh, you know, we had uh, C.B. Smith on there, and we got those book comparisons, but I just think the conversation in general in that one uh, just really stuck with me. We, It was just, I mean, the show's always a good time for, for me and, and the guys, but uh, that one in particular, uh, I had a real blast doing, and then we did the video with Smith yeah. over on his channel. It was just... Uh, very memorable for me. If it's between the two, I, yeah, I'm going to say Willie's was my favorite because that fucking movie is just so on brand for me and it's just a huge part of growing up for me and like what that conversation spawned and then being able to talk to Michael Ray Bauer for four hours was yeah. pretty amazing. So, um, yeah, it was. It, I think I think it's that one for this season for sure. I like it, and uh, I am officially out of questions, <laughs> so we can continue the show. Uh, yeah, so I want to talk about the director a little bit now. Again, we mentioned this before. Uh, you know, we got going, but like we changed the format of the show a little bit, so the episodes are a little bit longer, but the time we spend talking about the movie is the same. Right. But yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about the director. The The film, Body Melt, was directed by Philip Brophy and written by Rod Bishop. Now, they're both part of this uh, experimental art rock band called Right Up Right, or as it's pronounced, uh... Yes, I read that in an article uh, the other day, too. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, and don't be confused with the California-based dance punk band, though. The three exclamation points, because they pronounce that... <laughs> as well. Oh my god. So I've been missing out on some great music, clearly. I I, I gotta go look for that. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta be out there somewhere, right? That sounds like it would be a hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> it might as well be. <laughs> Fucking Morse code over here. Yeah. Hashtag <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so they're in a group together, um, and they made like a bunch of experimental music and film and artwork and stuff, um, and live theater stuff. And uh, Phil. This is the, I think this is the only film he's made besides one other film, uh, I forget what it's called, it's called like Sperm, Sweat, and Tears, or some shit like that. Something similar. Okay. So, yeah. A salty treat. Yeah. Mmm. We get a couple of those. Ugh. <laughs> I just ate. <laughs> 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 he was also a professor and he taught film and music and he even published a book called 100 anime and it's about uh, excuse me yeah it's, it's about uh anime he just does like a deep dive into 100 different animes okay i am fever i am feverishly writing this down right i gotta see that i had to do a lot of, a little bit of digging for that one because well, what do you mean this guy's never seen akira there's no way <laughs> <laughs> Or Tetsuo. <laughs> well, for... now that you mention it, that's a good point. But I think the real shining... I mean, this film is great, but like, I think the real shining stars here are, is the FX team. Now, I had missed one, the big one, um, and Jenna clued me in, but Bob McCarran is the main effects head on this. He's like the designer, the production designer. And you might remember from uh, Bob McCarran from our other episode, uh, Razorback. Because he created the fucking Razorback for that film. Oh. And he's and again, like he's worked on The Road Warrior, The Howling Three, uh, Dark Age, that that great um crocodile movie that I keep telling you guys about that maybe we'll do next year. And even Dead Alive, Brain Dead. Ooh. Yeah. That's uh that's a resume, but I have to ask did he bring the rest of the Mad Max crew over from Razorback for this film? He did not. So our lineup consists of Peter Armstrong, who worked on Rogue, The Island of Dr. Moreau, Darkness Falls, the first Ghost Rider film, Where the Wild Things Are, uh, and Bait. Um, we have Jane Crockett, who's really only done this film and one other film. Uh, Jeff Little, who worked on The Marine, the first Ghost Rider, again, Where the Wild Things Are. A lot of these guys, guys and gals, worked together on a couple of these movies, like Where the Wild Things Are and Ghost Rider, um, and The Matrix, even. And Jeff Little's actually, Jeff Little specifically and Kevin Turner are working on the new Mortal Kombat movie. Ooh. Huh. Okay. Like, Kevin Turner is the head 
FX guy on the new Mortal Kombat movie. I have heard good things about uh, the, the the fatalities in that movie from someone in that film. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, shit. As long as we don't have Scorpion Spear being sentient, you know, <laughs> I could do without that shit. <laughs> <laughs> with eyes and a mouth and shit, yeah, yeah. So Kevin Turner is the head on that, but he all, but he did uh, the second and third Matrix movies. Um, and then we have Angelo Sahin who did, uh, who worked on Komodo, Pitch Black, whoa, yeah, Flipper, uh, Mission Impossible Two, Queen of the Damned, Scooby Doo, Son of the Mask, <coughs> Ghost Ship, uh, and the the remake of Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. And can I say, um, for some reason, there seems to be a lot of people involved in Queen of the Damned that were actually involved in this, too. Yeah, yeah. I know one of the actors was also in Queen of the Damned, and he played, like, a very small role of Armand in it. But, yeah, and, the, and it, Bob McCarron also worked on Queen of the Damned. Are we still talking about him? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we're talking about all of them. Yeah, it's that's a weird connection, too. You're right. It's just like, oh... What movies have you worked on? Oh, Body Melt and Queen of the Damned. <laughs> Remember that piece of shit movie, Queen of the Damned? Yeah, right. <laughs> I've never, I've, I've never seen that. Apparently, it's one of the worst adaptions of the material. Really? I'm a huge Anne Rice fan, and I was severely disappointed. It's kind of like if you took a um, Jack Skellington beanie from Hot Topic <laughs> and, and became sentient and made a movie. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I'm going to just ask a, an addendum to that because I also have not seen it. Now, I am in the middle of reading uh, Interview with a Vampire for like four, <laughs> four fucking months because I keep putting it down. Is, is it in that series? Yeah, it's the last of that. Well, it's like the third of that series. I think there's technically five or six, but okay. Eh, the the only first three are the only good ones, in my opinion. <laughs> sure, sure. My brother-in-law loves Anne Rice, and he loves that series, and he fucking hates that movie. Oh yeah, with a passion that is unrivaled in the universe. What's funny is that I never hear people talk about the movie, but I always hear people talking about like, yeah, it was Aaliyah's last role, and that sucks. I'm like, yeah, I, Aaliyah was good. How was the movie? Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Also, she was a art, uh, 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 a musician, right? Yeah. Okay. Was that her only acting gig? I think, honestly, no, I think she was in a couple other things, but that was going to be her kind of like breakout role. Yeah. And you know, she did good in it. She didn't really have many, you know. Speaking parts? Uh, speaking <laughs> parts, yeah. But <laughs> Like you do, you know what I mean, when you're trying to be an actor? <laughs> hey, all you need is that one line to get into uh, the, the writer, the actor's guild, so that's all she really needed. Straight from Graydon Clark, man. Clued us in. All right, so we want to we want to crack into this. If if any of you uh, want to give this uh, plot crunch, maybe give it to our special guest. Can I uh, can I do instead? Someone can do an actual plot crunch, but instead, I'd like to offer a visual metaphor for what this movie is about. Take a GI Joe and just hit it with a blowtorch. <laughs> Uh, like Meltman, and then sneeze on and it. And then sneeze on, it. sneeze on it. Drag it through some like some like maybe some melted gushers. Yeah, and then like I don't know, take a side of beef and throw it against the wall and listen to the sound it makes. And that's body belt. <laughs> and then put it in Australia. Yeah, <laughs> and then give it a give it a, an accent, an Australian accent. Yeah. And have scenes that are so repulsive you think you can smell them. Ugh, Jenna, you wanna you wanna plot crutches for us? Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, so the movie's kind of it. It starts off with, uh, you see like this, this weird vitamins being made and, from this company and, you know, turns out that, you know, they might not be as they appear and they're testing it. On this community, what was that? What was that like cul-de-sac? Pebbles Court. Pebbles Court. Yeah, and they, they were testing it on this group in, in like this cul-de-sac. And um, things go awry. To say the least. <laughs> <laughs> things start melting. <laughs> that's basically it, yeah. That, yeah, that's kind of what happens. I think once things go awry, they just continue to go that way until the movie is over. <laughs> There are definitely several scenes in a row where, where things happen and the cops are just like, huh, yeah, that kind of adds up. Yeah. Once this hits a certain point, it just slides down that fucking slope and it just keeps going until you hit the bottom. <laughs> I guess I should also say that, like, yeah, there are these two, like, I guess the CIA or FBI equivalent in Australia. <laughs> and it's just these two guys that are just kind of following the case along. And I guess they'd be considered the main characters. Um, I mean, they're in it the most. Sure. Them and, the, and I guess our 
villain characters. That's like the lifeline to our reality of the film is like the detectives. Right. I, I think you're right though, Jenna, because every other character that you think is a main character is excised from the film <laughs> as soon as you're convinced they are the main <laughs> character. It's almost like it's like you learn someone's name. It's like, oh, okay, and something terrible is already happening to you. <laughs> and they even take the time to kind of develop the characters too. And you're like, oh, oh all right. <laughs> yeah, just long enough for you to care. Which I guess is effective writing at the end of the day. No, absolutely. Because then because then it's just not just like, oh, well, now that person's melting. You're like, oh, my God, that person's <laughs> melting. I mean, we talk about, uh, we mentioned Street Trash a little in the beginning here, which I think we are eventually going to visit maybe next year. Yeah. But, you know, that movie, in a similar sense, you know, those first couple kills are just random people, but they build it up enough that you, you're like, you're, you're kind of repulsed and you're laughing, but you're also, you feel bad even though you've been with these characters for minutes. Um, I, I don't know about that. Um, most of the, most of the people who get it are fucking assholes in that movie. Well, I, I'm not saying I, well, okay, redact the part where I said you feel for him, but the other two things I said, I think hold water. Oh no, for sure. This f- movie opens with like a commercial for, uh, Vimuville uh, vitamins? Yeah, sure. Vaudeville. I fucking love this. Yeah, it was great. Oh, and that music, man. Oh, it's so fucking... Oh, I forgot to mention, the music for the film is also done by, uh, by Philip Brophy and Rod Bishop. They actually scored the huh. whole thing themselves, too. And produced it, and wrote it, so... <laughs> they did a good job. Yeah. The music in this movie made my ears perk up so fucking hard, it's not even funny, because, like... This is stuff I listen to unironically. Like, I fucking love 90s KMFDM sounding shit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love Front 242. I love Nietzsche Rap. I love all that shit. So, yes. like, when I hear all this stuff, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm with you on this. God, yes. <laughs> but yeah, so we're introduced to, what's her name? Sh- Shauna? Sean. Sean. Not to be confused with Sean. Yes, Sean. It's two A's in there. Shan. Shan. <laughs> Shan. I think I, when I looked it up, it was S A A N. S H A A N. So I guess that's how you. I guess when you're Australian, this is how you how you just say Shan. Yeah, Shan. There's Sean, and then there's Shan. All right. Sean, Shan. Who could give a fuck? It's one of those. Yes. <laughs> so, so she's like, she's walking around, and it's like this spa commercial, right? And she's like, uh, yes, at 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 Vimaville, we we're gonna take you in, and we're gonna do things for you. Everything's great. Eat healthy health food and exercise and drink this fucking shit that we give you. Eat health food. Ignore the cupcakes and donuts on the table. Yeah. <laughs> Come down to Vaudeville and eat these th- and succulent things. <laughs> Delicious donuts. And it's all sanitized and shit. And we go from this commercial. Well, we go to a scene that, um, that kind of flows into this, but sandwiched in between these scenes is this amazing title sequence. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I, I I don't know, Joe, if you can even explain this, if you have words for it, because I don't. Yeah, it's very, it's like a combination. Okay, it's like a practical, physical title effect. Right. So when the title comes up and it says body, it, it's in like, it's like in a split screen and the top says body. And it's like this skin that's like pushed out with these letters, almost like Freddy Krueger in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street when he pushes his face through the uh, through Nancy's uh, ceiling. Right. And then the bottom is like this frosty, crunchy, Tetsuo-esque, like, stop-motion melt. And then it says melt. It's really fucking cool. Yeah, I loved it. It reminds me kind of of, like... Like the old school Nickelodeon, yes, mm. uh, kind of things, but like also mixed with that Ichi the Killer title sequence, yes, yes. with the splooge. Oh, oh yeah, hell yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Like you combine those two things, like that's kind of the opening, or like those those old like uh, Toho uh, openings, or like the old Ultraman opening, yes. where it would have the studios and like have the paint that swirls and shit. It's really cool. Or you know, come. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Again, salty treat. <laughs> so you know, as I said, sandwiched in between the previous scene and the scene I'm about to talk in is this title scene. But we we follow this thread of this character, uh, Sean. And uh, I was not expecting this because we go like full frontal on on her and this guy Ryan almost immediately. Oh yeah, we go right into it. Um, they're in this this spa and it's like lit with like it's the greens and blues and there's like a tanning bed and we're all fucking sweaty. Well, they just fucked. I think is the implication there. Yo, it's it's fucking musky in there. All right. Oh yeah, no, yeah, it's palpable on screen. <laughs> like like Connor said, they can pr- I can smell them. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, it looks like you can smell it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Your glasses fog up when you just watch that scene. (laughs) (laughs) It sticks to your skin. So, Sean 
takes, like, uh, I don't know, a fucking syringe of reagent and sticks this fucking guy in the arm. Yeah. <laughs> fucking A. <laughs> Elliot's in the other room watching through, like, a two-way mirror. <laughs> Masturbating. It's totally filmed like a fucking Nine Inch Nails video, too. Like, there's all these weird fucking close-ups and, like, a shot of the fucking syringe blasting fucking liquid out of it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's cool. Like, that's all intercut, and then, like, the titles come up in between that. But, yeah, she ends up shooting this dude up, and then there's, like, this VO where, you know, she she's on the phone, and she's, like, she's talking to somebody. We don't know who it is yet. She's like, yeah, I fixed Ryan. He's he's dead. Uh, he's, like, one of, this guy Ryan's, like, one of their top chemists or some shit. And she's like, yeah, shot him up with V59. And uh, all the Pebbles Court test subjects are all, they, they're all getting their vitamins, and uh, Ryan's gonna try to go warn them, but uh, he's shit out of luck, because he's gonna fucking die soon. All right. I could have just, I could have just shot him. I don't know why I did this. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna make him suffer with a, with a drug that we're supposed to be keeping under wraps. And she also says he should be dead by morning. And she, uh, she highly miscalculates this. Um, according to some of the deaths later in the film, that motherfucker should be dead within the hour. Well, oh yeah, for sure, for certain. I mean, I'm not even sure what happens to him in the lead up to his you know his impending demise because a lot of shit goes down (laughs) well you know she's talking on this vo like oh right now he's probably looking up the information and for all the people that got the uh sample and he's like on a computer in his jurassic park fucking slash friday the 13th for the nes uh game fucking map or whatever it's a unix system i know this and it's got that like uh, the industrial music like playing over it it looked straight up like something out of the fucking Lawnmower Man PC game that I always talk about. Like, it's structured exactly the same. You took the words out of my mouth because I was about to go, the <laughs> phone rang, and it was Job's war cry. <laughs> Dude, it's so fucking similar. And, like, it has the fucking Bonzi Buddy modulated voice. It's like, nine pebbles court. <laughs> so he's playing Doom, the Doom Beta, the original Doom <laughs> Beta. <laughs> In the suburbs, they never actually released that version. Clearly, yeah, that that yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that was the first version of Postal w- before the top down. Right. It's kind of like told in a way where it's like visual, and then she's doing this vo right. So he's the top chemist, and he's basically she's basically tells the audience that like he doesn't want to be a part of this program anymore, and now he's going to try to stop it, right? Because they've been feeding this shit <laughs> to these people in this cul-de-sac, so he's what he's doing is breaking away from the company in this scene. He, like, burns his ID. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. If you were going against Umbrella... <laughs> oh, right, okay. Would you burn your fucking ID and just, like, leave it in their parking lot while you drive away? I'd probably burn it and throw it out the window, like, 50 miles down the road, maybe. Uh, what? Like, throw it in a furnace or something. What are you doing? You're just leaving it there. Oh, well, okay, right, right. To be found. Again, she could have just shot him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See? Because it didn't really go anyone's way. And here's the thing I don't get. Supposedly, it's, like, her boyfriend, so I guess she just is, like, doesn't give a shit at all because he's gonna blow the cap off the project. She's like, well, oh well. Yeah. There goes this relationship down the toilet. Well, in later scenes, that one woman's just kind of banging all those, like, oh, yeah. bodybuilders with the helium voices. Oh, God. We'll get to that. Tiny, or whatever his <laughs> name is. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny voice, maybe. <laughs> yes. Uh. So, yeah, so he's, so he's on this mission to go fucking... Uh, stop these people from from eating this shit. So what this? I just want to preface this with: the, when you have this drug, this low dosage drug, you need to keep taking it in smaller doses. But it also what it does to you is is not really talked about until like the end of the movie, and even then, it's kind of just even hinted at. Right. It distorts your entire uh, body inside. Right. So this guy goes to a gas station and he stops off before he gets to this cul-de-sac because he's. I guess he's going to warn these people. Specifically, Paul Matthews at, at Nine Pe- Pebbles Court. Well, yeah, we don't know exactly who that is yet. And the way people are introducing this movie is a little strange, but I, I'm into it. Mm-hmm. So he gets to this gas station, and, and he's like, all of a sudden he's freaking out because he doesn't realize that she fucking dosed him while he was sleeping. I don't know how you don't feel a fucking needle go into you, but okay. Well, you know, they just went for round three, and he was really knocked out after that. I guess so. He smiles and shit. Very dehydrated. <laughs> he's dehydrated. Uh, oh, give me some of that V55. Stick it in me. Basically, this this vitamin or whatever, it, like, invigorates your libido. It's almost like this from beyond ass shit where, like, instead of stimulating, like, the pineal gland, like, it's supposed... It's like this mind-opening transcendence. The way they put it is, like, your body is just a vessel and, like, we have not 
even tapped its full potential, and basically what this chemical will do is, I don't know what, turn you into fucking uh, Crawford tilling ass, I guess, <laughs> and like make you meld with fucking people with their minds and their bodies, and you become some kind of society concoction. I don't know. I, I think that's it. The main thing is that it's supposed to turn your body into like its peak physical form. Yeah, I think like the idea behind it was kind of like, um, oh, well, I want to be, because, you know, it's like, oh, they died of uh, hyper health, man. He, This guy was too healthy. Oh, yeah, hyper, hyper natural causes, he says. Right. Yeah, yeah, hyper natural causes. So it's like, I, in what I gathered from the film was it was trying to kind of like, um, you, you get those people that get really into health, especially in Australia. That's really big. Gotcha. Yeah, and then they're drinking stuff like turpentine. It's weird. It's weird there, man. Oh my goodness. And so like, I think like, you know, I could be totally wrong on this, but what I got out of it was it's supposed to be like, um, people who kind of go overboard with the health thing and then they end up like actually destroying their bodies. But yeah, it's definitely like, I mean, obviously first and foremost, it is like a splatter film, but I, secondly, it definitely is satirical picking at that kind of stuff. Yeah, for sure. No, without a doubt. Definitely. I think the main thing was they, it was an excuse for special effects. You know? <laughs> oh well, yeah. yeah. It, it's like, it's like fucking altered beast, right? Power up. But instead of a <laughs> yeah. werewolf, you turn into a pile of shit. <laughs> Yeah, also, uh, melt isn't exactly the best word to describe what happens to these people, because, like, sure, sometimes you melt, other times, shit just comes out of you. Like, <laughs> Other times, your placenta falls out. Oh, God. <laughs> and becomes sentient. <laughs> it seems to come up a lot this season, so, um... Yeah, yeah. So he goes to the gas station, and he doesn't realize he's dosed, and, like, his fucking neck... He starts like first. He starts like choking, right? And he's he goes into the gas station. He's like, "Uh, you got any detergent?" Which is soap for for uh, all these uh, U.S. folks listening. And he goes over to this fucking shelf and he's like reading the ingredients on it because I guess something in the soap counteracts this shit. Apparently, yeah. Because he starts fucking drinking this shit. Yeah, I was confused. I'm like, "What are you? Are you just losing your mind at this point? Like, why are you drinking detergent?" <laughs> well, when we find out what the first step of this shit is, but yeah, he's drinking this detergent and his fucking like throat splits open <laughs> and meanwhile the clerk is just like hey buddy you gotta pay for that what the fuck this guy's weird what the fuck if yeah, you fucking peel poppers get your jugular blood off my products <laughs> right i like how he makes a comeback at the end too like you see that that weird guy Did you ever catch him <laughs> yeah right <laughs> he was popping pills in the corner over there he stole some fucking detergent fuck it was drinking soap a turpentine or something <laughs> <laughs> shitty vitamins so he charges out and uh, like joe was saying his neck is just like slowly splitting apart almost like his neck is trying to detach from his body yeah kind of it's almost like gills too on his on the, on the front of him yeah I, you know my, my uh, brain immediately goes to the thing well what happens next yeah there's a lot of like thing elements he ends up like so he ends up getting to pebbles court but he like he's like driving erratically and like cops chase him and this motherfucker drives into pebbles court and screen and, and he's like he pulls out like a tape recorder yes and he's talking about like the different phases of this drug and he's like and he's like oh first phase is hallucinogenic and the second phase is glandular and the third phase is body melt tm no he doesn't say <laughs> he just screams and fucking careens into a goddamn uh truck and like blows through the front window oh man we're we're introduced but not necessarily given the names of several characters in this cul-de-sac uh starting with these uh Okay, so originally I was referring to these two characters as Bogans, but we we met the real Bogans in about 20 minutes. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> and sorry if I'm jumping all over the place. I'm, I'm trying to tell it in a linear fashion because... You're good. The way that the movie works is like, yeah, like Sean said, like we're visually introduced to all these people, but I wasn't going to start talking about them until they drop their names a little bit. Oh, sure. And the thing is, because this movie is apparently based on a series of short stories, it works kind of like an anthology? Yeah, it's sort of. All broken up, yeah. It's a bunch of, yeah, it's interweaving stories that are all with characters who are connected, who all live in the same place, but, like, they don't really affect one another, to, per se. Huh. Yeah, right. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I have watched this, like, probably, like, five, six times before, you know, before re-watching it again, 
And yeah, this is the first time I rewatch is the first time I was like, oh, it's an anthology. I got it. But the way they do it is like seamless. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. But now that you're mentioning it in my head, I'm like going back to all the scenes. I'm like, yeah, that kind of lines up. It's kind of like like if you took the like, I think the title cards of Trick or Treat, like it would be a similar movie where it is a bunch of stories that are all in the same like block, essentially. They just keep weaving in and out of each other. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Because you're right. Like Jenna even brought it up. The convenience store clerk would kind of be like your wraparound and the Mm. cops are kind of the characters that lead you through the whole story connecting everything straight up that's that, that's what i was saying like towards the beginning too like got you those two policemen are like are are the uh the tenuous uh through line right but yeah he flies through the windshield and all these people kind of surround him to see if he's okay and these tentacles shoot out of his neck and throat oh, dude they look like straight up the fucking robot robotine fucking uh, flippy rubber hoses they look like. Oh, yeah. You know what we have to do next now? We have to put them in the Nemesis Project, okay? <laughs> put put Ryan in the Nemesis Program. Um, yeah, these tentacles shoot out of his throat, up into his mouth and nose, and then he's finally mercifully dies, and they, like, retreat back into his chest. It's fucking vile. And doesn't the pregnant woman see that? Yes. Y- yeah. Before we go into that, though, I do want to comment on something that this movie comes back to a lot with this visual thing where you see like the interior of people's bodies where this they almost the movie almost portrays it as if this reject you know this shit that's injected in you or you've drank or however you've consumed it is almost like a living being inside your body that is moving around well it almost makes all of your inside sentient right because like right right here we get like some some, one of his body parts like mutates and like comes out of his throat and like tries to like suffocate him and then like They have these scenes of this esophagus that's absolutely disgusting that's, like, vibrating and, like, opening and closing or, like, Mm -hmm. I don't even know. Maybe an intestine? I don't know exactly what they're trying to show there. Yeah, right. Yeah, I was wondering, like, what what they would have used for that. (laughs) You know? Like, like just, like, a pig anus or something. (laughs) (laughs) It's probably just, like, an enlarged, like piece of latex that they just like shot some lights through and like squeezed it's the uh the hallway the coral line has to crawl through it's just lit differently <laughs> <laughs> see i was gonna say it was that uh that that shit from the suckling that bill o'reilly went out there and got killed in yes it could be that's happening inside this woman so like we were saying we're introduced to a few characters here so this guy goes through the windshield and fucking dies and then we're kind of introduced to a few different characters in the cul-de-sac and our detectives this one guy before we get to know his name i was just calling the fucking australian jeff daniels okay <laughs> who's like drinking this vitamin <laughs> shit oh my god um and then we, we get introduced to uh, gino gento and sal sassone oh my god these two australian italians yeah they should be their own fucking spinoff <laughs> oh my god they look like rowan atkinson was split in half and made into these fucking weirdos and they are dressed to the 90s in the, like, the nth degree. Like, fucking shaggy bowl cut in one of them with, like, a hoodie tied around his fucking waist, and the other one's in just, like, an outfit that needs the volume turned down. It's like the poor man's Bill and Ted. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was referring to them as bogans because they just—they just seem like degenerate people <laughs> with this sports car that doesn't have a windshield. I think it's fucking hilarious that they're supposed to be Italians, but they're straight up just Australian guys. And then the uh, the cops arrive, and then these—I uh, think what are they, they are kind of like this FBI equivalent, but I think they're called like CBI or CIB or some shit. Yes, yeah, CIB. Cats and bags. <laughs> Cops and boogers. It's cops and boogers, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, I'm gonna eat some cops and boogers later. There is no cops and boogers division six. <laughs> these guys are your through line, but like they constantly show up to these like horrific scenes of like just grotesque human death. And they're like, they're like, Oi, ain't that a thing. To be fair, I feel like that like I got a very Australian vibe. Like I'm like, that's probably what it's like. Yeah. So this detective's name is Sam Elliott. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so funny because like on one hand, I'm, like, picturing Sam Elliott, like, cowboy Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott yeah. Like, getting out of the car and being like, oh, God damn, this is, a, this is a lot of boogers and, and shit. But he also looks like George C. Scott. Yes, he does. Like, straight up. He's like, I solved that other case with the kid in the wheelchair, so now I'm in the booger division. His partner looks like Paul from, uh, Werewolf. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, from Miss Science Theater. Paul, you's, you's detective now? Paul, Paul, you is a detective, Werewolf. <laughs> 
a wolf cop. I also love like that one, but they, they're like kind of questioning the neighbors in this, uh, what is it again? Ryan is his name? Not Ryan or Paul. Who's the guy who's going to the airport? Oh, that's Paul. No, the guy at nine people's court. Australian Jeff Daniels. Yeah. They're like, oi, you, we'll question you. And he's like, nah, so I gotta go to the airport. And they're like, oh, fine. Like here, I would get my fucking ass kicked. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. You better be in your house when they get there or they're questioning your ass. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, can we talk to you about this death? He's like, nah, I'm good. And they're like, all right. <laughs> well, see ya. Yeah, see you later. <laughs> He's really the one that you see taking this shit throughout the whole film. Oh, yeah. Paul's always drinking this vitamin shit. Some of them are green. Some of them are fucking uh, blue. Uh, yeah. Red, I think, is one of them. <laughs> well, he he's always drinking the green one because it's almost like, you know, uh, you know, get like those iced tea packets or Kool-Aid packets and you just pour it in a cup. Or, or like a protein powder or some shit even. I forget what they were called, but the grocery store used to sell these effervescent tablets that were like raspberry flavored. And it was like, oh, this is fun because I'm a kid and I'm going to drop uh, this tab into the water and it's going to turn into like a blue drink or whatever. Right, right. It's kind of like that. And you add seltzer to them and then you drink it and it's not good for you. But they don't know that because they just think it's a healthy thing that was sent from like the health uh, farm up the fucking road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? Actually, did did they all like take the supplement in a different way now that I think about it? Yes. Yeah, because some people are like just eating it in the food and shit. I think we see later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they seem like either and I couldn't tell if they were like a voluntary control group. Like they seemed like they're in like a branded housing community where like they have like whatever you know, yeah. Villaboo, whatever the fuck this company's called, products over the place. <laughs> Umbrella. <laughs> Umbrella, yeah. Umbrella. Umbrella. But yeah, like he and I think also in that like that VR or you know, computer generated like introductory scene in the beginning, like they do ramble off the names of people living in the house. And then I think the method of which they are taking this this drug or chemical. And I think that's why he specifically writes down Nine Pebble Court, because that is the one house that got the supplement in the mail. Yeah. yeah. I mean he's trying to intervene somehow, some way. Like I don't even know what he was gonna do when he got there. Throw them in the garbage? Light them on fire, probably. <laughs> and leave them in his driveway? Just light them on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Just runs in, slaps the glass in this guy's hand. This guy just beats the fuck out of him. Like, call, <laughs> he call, just calls the cops. This motherfucker, he smacked my vitamins right out of my hand. Broke my fucking door in, knocked my glass out of my... And then his neck exploded. Yeah, and then he just died. I don't even know what happened. He started saying shit like, first step is hallucinations or some shit. Don't drink in my laundry detergent. It's weird. It's fucking mental. I don't know how to describe today, all right? Something about glands. <laughs> <laughs> Glandular problems. Also, I just want to note real quick, we opened this event month with an Ozploitation movie, and we're closing it up. With an Ozploitation movie. <laughs> yeah. Don't you just love the sun beating down on your neck? <laughs> yeah, so this guy's dead and they shrew away a child. Also, we're introduced one of my favorite characters, Jogging Man. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, he's adorable. I fucking love that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he was the saddest death for me. He is never in a constant state of just motion or like bobbing up and down. Like he's never standing still. He's always got headphones on and just like popping up and down or running. But he's not in shape. You know, he's just. No. Well, right. Yeah. No, no. He has like 1920s strongman body is, which is like you just have a bloated chest. The in shape, out of shape guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the skinny fat where it's like you're just puffing your chest out and you have a little bit of hair. You're like, oh, yeah. So let's go. Well, you know, let's make the Australian comparison here, you know, from Kathy and Kim, you had, uh, you had Kath and, uh, her husband Kel were, you know, workout nuts, but those two were fucking skinny as string beans. Right. I don't know why I said string bean like that, but that's how it came out of my mouth. <laughs> Um, so then we follow Paul to the airport after he drinks some of this shit. Paul's story is so weird. He has a fucking major migraine, it appears, in the airport. Yeah, but, like, Paul's arc is just weird. I don't even know what the fuck Paul's supposed to be doing. He's just, he just shows up at places. Well, I think, this might be me extrapolating a little bit, but... There's some talk about how his, he got divorced and he has a quote-unquote secret life in Pebbles Court. Or whatever. And I guess he's got to fly to his actual job that he's like some kind of CEO or important person of. I don't know because like he's at the airport. I mean, we're going to come back to the airport in a second. But like he's at the airport, then he's in like a, uh, a high-rise building somewhere, and then he's like back in Pebbles Court. And, I'm, and they never they're just like, yeah, whatever. You're, you're in the fucking, you, you, I don't even know what. I, I don't even know. So he's in the airport, and he just starts fucking tripping balls because the first, you know, the first step is, uh, or the first phase is hallucination. He just stares at this one woman, and her face turns into, like, a sun. Yeah. Well, that woman, I don't think, was even there. And, like, to 
to kind of go back to Joe's point, like his story is that he starts hallucinating and never stops. Yes. So I think that might just be part of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You also got in that scene, like those awesome 90s punks that are sitting there. Yes. Oh, yeah. And I love the gag there where they're like, man, he's he must be on some fucking drugs or like too many drugs or whatever. Too many drugs? <laughs> <laughs> Question mark. Fucking pill poppers. <laughs> fucking pill poppers. Well, he goes to like the lounge to kind of cool off and then he, he sees this woman that is 100% not real, like no bones about it. Oh, yeah. And man, that makeup was... Oh, that scared the crap out of me, to be honest. Yeah. It's really good. And, like, she was freaking me out. Yeah, she was freaking me out. Because she's, like, she, like, shows up in his, as an apparition, and, like, she says some shit like, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, my husband beat me, and now I'm trying to get out of here. Um, can I please crash at your place, or whatever. It's kind of Lynchian, where it's, like, she just appears, says a bunch of poppycock, and then just, she disappears, you're like, hold on, was she real? Or was that, like, what the fuck was that? Right. It's very evident she's not real, because when they pan out, there's no one, he's not talking to anybody. Right, but is this his ex-wife? Did they get divorced because he used to abuse her? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, like, that's what he's seeing. I get what you're saying. Doesn't she say, like, I don't know if I want to talk about it now, but, like, she says something like, oh, I'm I'm everything you are or something like that. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, it, it, it's almost like because she's obviously a very big piece of his subconscious so i think we're i think we're on to something i want to break that down when we get there because she's definitely like in this scene in particular like a mad max looking type character and then later on she is just for for lack of a better term normal looking yeah even slightly angelic <laughs> yeah no absolutely that was the exact word i was about to use then we just we we we, we start kicking it with fucking gino and sal <laughs> driving my favorite bit <laughs> so what is their whole plan they're gonna go to this health factory or aka umbrella to get like their dicks pumped like what is their plan <laughs> so that so okay so the the plan is to go to vandaloo veta veta vegemite vimoville vegemite vita vegemite put it on some bread <laughs> i got it i got jaws of the shit um, no, so they, like, pull out this photo of, of Sean. Like, yeah, she's hot, right? She's like, yeah, I'd fuck her. Yeah, I can't wait. We're going to this spa. We're going to fucking give sperm donations. And, and this, there's a farm, this daycare farm packed with women. It's going to be ace, mate. These guys are fuckwits. Like, these guys are idiots. Like, <laughs> so they're going there to fuck. Especially, like, the both of them are stupid, but the guy with the hat on is, is negative IQ. Uh, so, so in a nutshell, they're called there to get samples of their urine and sperm and stuff because they're test subjects that, you know, they don't know they are, but... <laughs> Uh, she basically calls him. He's like, yeah, come up here and we'll fucking jerk you off or whatever. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it. I like how there's such morons who are like, they're like, sperm donations? All right, it's gonna be a fuck fest. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have an orgy, mate. <laughs> That's how sperm donations work, right? Which room do I get? Do I get to pick the girl that gets to pump me off? It's basically a brothel, right? Same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? Well, they definitely were imagining. Uh, yeah. Uh, this guy will fuck anything that moves. Yeah. <laughs> just imagine them getting to like a laboratory, like like a contemporary lab, which is like people, like tired looking people in just like scrubs and lab coats. They're like, they're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> they go in and like somebody has like a cup and they go to hand it to him. It's that scientist from Robot Jocks and they just like pull their pants down and have their hands on their jimmies. <laughs> She's like, ah, uh, next, please, and just, like, tells them the least. Excuse me, boys, can you please masturbate into these cups? Well, like Connor said, <laughs> it's probably GVD in disguise, so she'd probably just pu grab both of them and just start pumping. Hello, boys! <laughs> this isn't what I expected, bruv. I know it said coming to a lab, but this is my mansion. <laughs> Come on down to the red light district. Come down to the basement, then take the elevator to the sub-basement that no one knows about. I have a giant shock down there. What's with the naked guy with the chicken? Don't ask questions. <laughs> I, eyes forward and keep following me. He's like Sloth in the Goonies. Stay to the right. Stay to the right. And it's just Charnetsky watching fucking Errol Flynn eating chicken. Yeah. Yeah. No lines up. Just like oh, she she's got two more. Oh great. Uh, he closes the door, puts his headphones on. <laughs> so we cut to like this fucked up like gas station farm uh, thing. It's basically like the Australian fucking Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. Oh yeah. Good fucking. God, these people made my fucking skin crawl. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is feeding sea monkeys to his pet piranha yeah. or fish or whatever the fuck he's got in there. And like the whole gag with him is that he 
sings lyrics to fucking Deep Purple's Highway Star? <laughs> Yep. And I guess, why do they stop there? Because they want to get their fucking windshield replaced? Uh, no, they're lost. Oh, okay. So they pull up and you're like, hey, mate, we're lost. And this guy's name is Pud. And he's like this fucking, he looks like it, this inbred, kooky fucking backwoods motherfucker. He's got like a fucking growth on his cheek and shit. He fucking looks like Primus wrote a song about him at some point, okay? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Pud. <laughs> Not to be confused with the American guy. I've always been mud. Ge genetically enhanced <laughs> fucking <laughs> dirtbag. I would love it if just Chop Top made an appearance in that. Uh, you know what? You, you, you were fucking singing my words because we get introduced to him. The Australian Chop Top comes out in a second. Uh, I, I imagine he like steps around the corner, sees what's going on, and just like cautiously backs up. He's like, nah, I'm good. So they get out of the car and they're like, yeah, man, uh, we need gas and like our fucking windshield's busted or whatever. And he calls his kids by screaming, Suey. <laughs> Yes. He's like, Suey! And these fucking mutants come out of their holes. My god, the work on these two is so effective and, and appalling. It's gross. If anyone's seen Romper Stomper, um, that that one guy with the big forehead, the chop top guy, that's, um, he was in, he was in that movie, and that's how he looks. Oh my goodness. I've never seen that. It's good. It's got Russell Crowe as a uh, neo-Nazi, and it takes place in Australia. What? <laughs> I fucking beg your pardon. Was he? He's fighting people, right? <laughs> and wow, that the ending is. It's like a way better American History X, let's say that. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick, why is, why is like, three-legged dogs a thing in Australian films? Yeah, I was wondering that. It's the outback, mate. Everything eats everyone there. Symbolism. He's got three legs there. When I was a kid in Silverton, like, the neighborhood I lived in, for some reason, like, all the kids were talking about the three-legged shepherd, because I guess there's a three-legged dog that lived in the area. But they talked about it like it was a fucking cryptid. Like, oh, yeah, the three-legged shepherd comes from between the hours of 7 and 8 p.m. Yeah, I'm on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go out after dark. I saw this fucking dog. I was like, th like third grade. I'm like, it is literally a dog that just has three legs. Like, it's the nicest animal I've ever met. <laughs> He's like, I just want, I just want somebody to pet me, man. So he calls his kids out like these inbred fucking twins or whatever. These kids put, f they're they're not even kids. They're like grown ass people. Yeah. They put Benny and Deco to fucking shame. Yeah. Yeah. Benny and Deco, at least, like they were scumbags, but they had a plan. Like they they knew what they were doing. Yeah. They didn't eat people. Yeah, well, that too. Yeah. <laughs> as far as we know, one of these kids has like no tongue. And like can't talk and shit and like I don't I can't even describe these things. They're like they have like an inch of plaque like popping off of their fucking teeth. <laughs> Yeah. They did such a good job with that part. <laughs> it's like this. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're great. Again, something you can smell. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, you just look at me and go like, ugh, God, like, your breath, your body, like, everything on you just looks... <laughs> and they all have, like, similar names, like Slab and Tab and Jab and Rab and and Bobby. Their names are just sounds. Like, <laughs> yeah. And their acting is so off-putting. Like, it's, it's too over the top, but that's what... But again, they're off-putting people. So it works. Yeah, the, the 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 bigger one, like the the more hunched over one, like there's a scene later on where like he's not the center of attention for the scene. He's just talking to, I think, Pud, but like his kind of idle active decisions are interesting because he constantly just like his hands are close to his chest and he's constantly just twitching, just constantly back and forth because these people are off their fucking rockers. It's such a weird element to this film. Oh, yeah. And somehow these Austat, how am I going to say this? These Austatalians or whatever you want to refer to them as. Austalians? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I straight. Australians. Australians. <laughs> well, there you go. Hi, right, can we get some gobble goo over here? <laughs> yeah, excuse me, I like the pasta for you. They even make a point where, like, he's like, he's like, oh, how many kids you got? He's like, or how many siblings you got? He's like, we're Italians, right? We got like 10, 20 of them. He says some <laughs> shit like, yeah, it, mucho uh, spermo pool. Whatever. Hey, when the moon hits your eye, it's a big pizza pie. It hits hit your eye like a big pizza pie, mate. I lost my hand. <laughs> I love Billy Joel. These guys become somehow, some way, fast friends with these uh, these Hills Have Eyes extras. <laughs> Why are we hanging out? Oh yeah, when they like ran over like to to the kangaroo, they were all about it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, come over here. We're gonna throw a rock about fifty yards and hit a kangaroo and kill it. Ah oh, yeah, come on. This is gonna be great. Wait a minute. Okay, you have to fucking 
tell the audience how the fuck this even happens. So the one with the the one with the tongue that's cut out goes to this field and the fuck and these guys are like, "What are you doing?" And they start like screaming at this kangaroo, but he's like. <laughs> kangaroo like gets stunned by this for some reason and then they throw a rock at it and it kills this thing point like like an expert shot like this is a quite the fucking throw yeah it's like a half a mile away and they all immediately erupt in cheers like yeah (laughs) (laughs) right right yeah they're like yeah you got they got it mate they go over to this thing and they cut out its adrenal gland and then split it and eat it and can i uh make you know, an actually part about this, which kind of- Oh, <laughs> not, I would, I welcome it. The adrenal gland is by, is on top of your kidneys. It is nowhere near the neck. Really? And I don't know if kangaroo anatomy is different, but for some reason that bothered the shit out of me. Also, how do these two Australian chuckle fucks know where the adrenal gland is in a kangaroo? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because it's it's one of them that says it. They're like, yeah, man, fucking, it's a funny bean or whatever. Yes, the adrenal gland. He's like, oh my god, it's the adrenal gland. <laughs> hey, my 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 uh, father told me about that back in Brooklyn. <laughs> Just going full Italian at this point. Hey, you always gotta remember where the fucking adrenal gland is in the fucking kangaroo. All right. <laughs> hey, yo, I'm part of this outback. <laughs> Don't let Jenna tell you it's by the kidneys. It's in the neck. All right. It's the last thing he told me before he was shot by a gangster. <laughs> the money. He's in the adrenal gland there, kiddo. These bogans proceed to uh, eat these things as they stare into each other's eyes and start laughing. Yeah, it's fucking gross. There's like a sister character that wants to fuck one of them. Slab. And he is all about... About it, like the mo- she's yeah. just like, hey, then, like biting her like lip and shit, and he's just like, yup, and she's, you know, not really the most attractive. <laughs> no, well, Get, well, yeah, the makeup is awesome because you could tell that there's been some work done on her forehead and her cheeks and everything. Oh yeah, I also love. I, I guess like she's the probably the first thing with a pulse to give him bedroom eyes, so he's like, all right, yeah. <laughs> he's like, great. Don't have to use me end anymore. Well, he's too stupid to know that this is a ploy from her. <laughs> if you're gonna, if so, if you're going to go like donate sperm at this one place, you're just gonna fuck some random, right? Like woman you find first. Like <laughs> she's like, is it true you say about it? Your the the Australian city folks, eh? And he's like, uh, maybe. What do you say we go fuck? Is it true what they say about the Australian penises? Are they big? (laughs) Then they got gold chains on them. (laughs) Let's presume he did make it to this laboratory, like, after he does this, like, they sent him, like, McCall, like, uh, you have, like, 11 STDs. What did you do before you came here? (laughs) Your crabs has gonorrhea. (laughs) (laughs) He always, he all of a sudden has, uh, you know, uh, uh, radiation poisoning. Well, right. I, I liked how this whole scene plays out, but he might have been better off just uh, eating the fucking uh, body melt medicine. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah, this guy's death is <laughs> it's fucking awful. Oh, yeah. Painful is a uh, not a not a deep enough word, let's say. Deep being the key word there. Yeah, there's a, there's one shot we'll talk about in a second that made me uh, audibly gasp. It was better than teeth. He runs <laughs> off to this, like, fucking this shanty cabin with her. Um, and also, this actress, I think, is delightful because, like, after they run into the thing, she pokes out from the side, kind of like looks for people, and then has a giddy meltdown, and then runs back inside. <laughs> so good. I was just so upset because I looked her up because I'm like, oh, this actress is amazing. And she really hasn't been in anything else, and that's such a shame. Yeah. Yeah, I struggled to find out who it was. I think her name is like Anthea something, and like it's like she's done three movies. And uh, yeah, what was it? I can't remember who's the one that goes inside, but he's wandering around with one of these hat boy now hat boy is the one in the cabin uh bowl cut is the one inside oh oh, oh right 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 he's the keanu reeves <laughs> <laughs> he's like driving in this truck with these guys and it, they just go in a circle around this fucking tree yeah that's gonna be important information for later the truck's important that's why i wanted to mention it yeah because these fucking monsters are spinning out from you know eating the adrenal gland i guess because they're like they're just shouting like crazy time <laughs> yeah yeah, because while he's doing that, the other guy goes off with the chick into the uh, shed, right? Yeah. yeah. Also, but there's a conversation between, um, I don't remember his, like, well, I think we called the guy with the bowl cut Bauhaus in um, Draniac. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, but he's talking to Pud, and, like, he mentions where he's from, and Pud has a moment, he's like, oh, oh, Pebble's cool, eh? Yeah, interesting. Like, as if he knows something. Yeah, foreshadowing. But, yeah, he's also wandering around the house, and they have, like, just hallways, like, it's like an Applebee's that someone just, like, I don't know, like... <laughs> 
There's a secret door like fucking Scooby-Doo Mansion. Joe said uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but I was thinking House of a Thousand Corpses, like, to a T. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what do you think House of a Thousand Corpses got it from? Well, uh, obviously, but I'm saying this particular scene of the hallway with all this shit on the walls. Sure. TGI Fridays, man. Oh, and then you see uh, the picture of the dad. Mm Mm-hmm. The uh, pud. Yes. Which, I guess we are kind of just doing the through line on this scene, but we, uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. While this is all going on... Christian Bale's in the corner. (laughs) With all the shit that they're not supposed to have. <laughs> oh well, yeah, yeah, phasing in and out. Yeah, listening to some, listening to like the fucking Beatles record in the corner. Just pass by him, he's crying, listening to an album. <laughs> The White Album. Shut the fuck up, Christian. Richard Mull's over there looking for his wife (laughs) or something. Her ghost, I think. There's this photo on the wall of Pud and this other scientist-like character that we we have met at this point in the movie, this doctor that the pregnant woman is seeing. Right. Sorry. Uh, Also, for listeners, we're kind of jumping all over the place because we just cut back and forth all over the place to this. Yeah. Yeah, I I think it's easier to, like, kind of, like, like wrap this particular story up too because it happens sure sure it happens away from the cul-de-sac too exactly but just i want to put a pin on that just so that we're clear on who this character is uh this character what what is his actual name because pud refers to him as dr crackers his name's dr carrera carrera okay but we don't even meet him yet so but just put that put that a uh, picture in your pocket real quick <laughs> give it to christian bale let him hold on to it for you <laughs> <laughs> it's 1986 i'm on mars holding a photo <laughs> Imagine dropping that photo on Mars. That'd be something. It's 1955. I'm in the reactor chamber. I mean, I've just injected myself with the serum. Now I have perfect hearing. So, so, so Slab's like, oh, can I give you a love bite or whatever? And he's like, oh, yeah, it's my favorite. She like bites him on the neck. And then we cut inside and we do that whole thing where he's walking through the, the house. <laughs> and we cut back because we hear a scream like they hear a scream out of the house and they go and they go running outside well the the, the hills have eyes guy runs out but the other italian guy kind of continues to roam around <laughs> Even though you just heard your friend ha- have a blood-curdling scream from outside. Your brother, not your friend. Yeah, you, well, yeah. And as we cut back to, what was her name, Slab? Slab. Slab. Literally have this massive fucking, <laughs> like, support beam, essentially, shoving it up this guy's asshole. I, is she, or is she just, ran, like, you know, viciously stabbing him in the dick? I could not figure out what the fuck was happening there. It's kind of the whole area. <laughs> Just the whole, she's like, fuck your, your whole inguinal area. <laughs> she's making new fucking holes, dude, because it's like this <laughs> giant fucking uh, pike she's stabbing him with. Yeah, but like, and like, so he's down like, like, I don't know, a pile of hay or something, and she's above him. It's, it is like she's digging a fucking hole with her posture. She's just like fucking up and down. He's just screaming. Oh, yeah. She's also, she's also like a full foot taller than this guy. While the cockatoo is standing there watching this eating crackers out of a box, just wanted to mention that. <laughs> and we, we go back inside. And the other brother, he's just still, again, wandering around, and he hears, like, he hears, like, someone having sex in the other room. Oh, my God, this is fucking great. Uh, this got a jump scare reaction out of me without actually being a jump scare. <laughs> yeah, really? And the, uh, the matriarch of the Fratellis is sitting in this fucking easy... <laughs> easy uh recliner watching just a a close-up on just balls and a dick going up and down into a vagina on the tv into a big butt yeah she's just watching hardcore porn the like grunting isn't like oh oh it's like (laughs) (laughs) it's just like the most disturbing grunting you ever heard. I couldn't tell if it was the TV or her making the noise, to be honest. Yeah. It took me a second to realize what I just saw because, like, there's so much garbage in this fucking room. And she is, like, sunk, like, plastered into this fucking chair. Like, she's. Dude, he goes to sit down on her. Yeah. And then she. He, it just. It cuts back in eyeballs. I was like, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Excuse me, love. Are these testicles on screen? Are those the ones that Philip Brophy made? That, that's what we're thinking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that a real. Dick and balls. I mean, who knows? You know what? Actually, you know who they actually probably are. There's a there's an autopsy scene a little bit later. <laughs> oh, actually, probably is the one he worked on. Yeah, those are probably them. My God, I can't wait to talk about that fucking dummy. Um, but but uh, the other uh, Australian runs out now, and he sees them all bickering, and the slab woman comes out of the fucking shed with blood all dripping down her neck. 
And uh, Pud's like slapping around like, Ah, yeah, find the other one. Keep it in the family. What I tell you about that shit? Does that mean she just like kills other family members? <laughs> right. Question mark. Or her brothers or her kids. Ooh. She's her own grandma. And her lovers. Well, I'm glad to see that hillbillies don't really change. <laughs> no matter where they are. <laughs> Every country has a Texas. <laughs> So then he gets the bright idea, because I, I don't know why he doesn't just go in his car, because he was the one driving. You would assume he still has the keys. Yeah. He uh, is like, oh, fuck, there's that truck that only went in a circle earlier. I'm definitely going to just steal that and get the fuck out of Dodge. And Pud, Pud goes, ain't nobody going to steal my car. Nobody going to take my car. You're going to be Ben Santa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking guitar solo plays. <laughs> was he gonna grab a stick of juicy fruit next? Like, what was. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's doing the fucking lyrics to Highway Star, dude. So this guy gets in the car, and like we kind of just were saying, it just keeps going in a circle around this tree. It's a killing machine, dude. It's got everything. Probably the creepiest shot in this entire movie, at least to me, is all of these people just coming in on him as he realizes he's just he's fucked he, he's done he's not gonna make it out of here oh dude yeah grandma adams is like fucking banging on the windshield and shit yeah yeah she somehow found the means to get off that fucking chair and is suddenly outside and like, whoa she got <laughs> off all right in like in like a second too like she is immediately outdoors yeah i was done you know that young man came in he really got me off he <laughs> I, I, you know, I was having real trouble. You know, I had that blanket over me, and I was fingering away like, <laughs> like Mount Vesuvius. It started flowing out when he sat down. Oh my goodness! Also, I'm a speedster, so I can get out here real fast. <laughs> <laughs> I harness, I harness the speed force. She's like the grandma in Resident Evil Seven that just pops up in the house randomly <laughs> wherever. Man, she's gonna give GVD a run for her money, huh? That's it. Oh, that is GVD's reverse flash. <laughs> Two of them now. I can see like a lot of Left for Dead characters in this. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Pills here. He got the screamer and the spitter or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> this woman just calls up GVD. She's like, it was me, Granny. It was me all along. <laughs> <laughs> I am the architect of your suffering. But yet they still hang out in the same brothel and watch porn together. Yeah, they're, they're, she's saying this with her like, they're like clinking beers, like clink. <laughs> yeah, well, well, right, yeah. Now, I knew it was you the whole time, you fucking bitch. I know, I welcome the intrusion. All right, now I need to use my powers to return to the Goonies and, uh, you know, take care of a pirate ship. Uh, <laughs> clearly, furiously, uh, you know, I have that third hand because I'm inbred that grows out of my stomach that it just is constantly down my pants. It's fucking Mama Fratelli. I forgot you said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, this is the MDU, l lest we forget. <laughs> so that's the end of that storyline. They both get killed. Okay. So we never come back to that, and just to, before we get into the next segment, there's like this break in between where the detective finds the vitamin vial f on that guy Brian who died in the beginning, the chemist guy, and he's like, yeah, I, oh, we got this vitamin vial, so I guess we'll go figure out where this came from. Good one. It's a good thing it has a company logo splattered across the whole bottle. V, v Manula. And then they go to the facility, right? Yeah, and Shan is seemingly the only employee who's there. <laughs> Like, the front desk is the beginning and the end of the staff. Yeah, right. And she comes in and she basically deters them. And they're like, he's like, oh, oh Johnson, the, the other detective's like, oh, let, let me handle this one. I, I'm going to get this Sheila real nice. <laughs> so they fucking go in there and he's like, you ever, you ever see this man? Or you, do you know this man? And she's like, nope, never seen him. They're like, okay, great. That wraps that up. Good boy. Yeah, she's got like photos of him on her desk because it was her boyfriend. She like pushes them down face front. They're like, huh. Any reason why you did that? Oh, you know, a, a cleaning time, you know? Oh, oh, okay. These pills are sold commercially everywhere. It could be from anywhere, really. <laughs> you ever hear that case in the 1980s where they used to take um, Tylenol out of the bottles and put uh, poison in them? It's the same thing. Except we did it intentionally, but uh, <laughs> yeah. don't write that down. Go investigate Tylenol, right, won't you? Yeah, why don't you go f fuck off? Go, f go look at Tylenol. Why can't you be deregulated like the U.S.? <laughs> We're not built on top of a fucking chemical dumping, Graham. Get out of here. <laughs> when that ha when, when that was brought up towards the end of the film, I literally just started laughing out loud. <laughs> how did the, how did the detective not know? We'll get to it, but I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also like the character development that happens on the car ride there, like between the <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> where he's like, ah, oh, you, you're killing yourself with all that junk food you eat, and like, why is this shoved in here? <laughs> No, that's like the Shakes the Clown thing where that dude's eating the corned beef and cabbage. He's like, you should eat a fucking salad once in a while. It's bad for you. <laughs> 
Right. Concern for your health there, Johnson. Like, I think it's like, oh, here's that slovenly, like, messed up guy. And then here's the old kind of, like, cool guy who knows everything about the CIB. Right. I'm a vegetarian. It's like they're, they're the Australian, uh, oh, fuck, who are those? Uh, the, the the cops from Spawn, uh, Twitch and, uh, oh, damn it. I think it's, isn't it Max and Twitch? I think it is Max and Twitch, yeah. Um, side note, so speaking of uh, powerlifting, um, I was in a powerlifting meet, uh, I'd say like a couple of years ago, and I won first place, and you got to pick out your trophy, and now I have this giant plaster trophy painted gold of spawn deadlifting and it is my most prized possession <laughs> Whoa. that's fucking amazing oh you gotta send us a picture so we can post it on the instagram <laughs> oh yeah you know what thought just occurred to me you know if umbrella was a person it would be tex <laughs> we're definitely not a, we're definitely not turning anybody into zombies uh, we're definitely not uh, polluting the waters could you imagine alex jones like talking about umbrella like defending them <laughs> They they did not nuke they did not nuke Raccoon City. That's a hoax. And going back to like he he advertises those supplements all the time. Like yeah, yes, the Gorilla Brain. He does. Holy shit. Fire mix. <laughs> did you try my new America's Roast Coffee? You gotta go have some. I'll tell you, it will not turn you into a zombie. This was not made from a string of the G virus. Okay, wake up, America. Do you want to turn the fucking frogs gay or not? <laughs> Literal zombies! Literal literal body melting! Umbrella is making those frogs straight again. <laughs> They're taking the fluoride out of the water and replacing it with better stuff. Why would you exercise? Take a goddamn pill. What's wrong with you? Do you want glandular problems or not? <laughs> Geronimo! We gotta do a uh, uh, remake of um, Body Melt and just put it in Texas or something. <laughs> it works too fucking well. Make it happen, somebody. <laughs> so we cut to Ryan's corpse, not Brian, but Ryan, the guy who went through the fucking wind windshield at the beginning, the chemist. Yeah, right, not to be confused with the other character, Brian, who was married to the pregnant woman, which, do you have a name for her? Yeah, I think it's Cheryl. Okay, yeah, yeah. Are you sure it's this guy's corpse? Or isn't it a very large-chested man who's also been <laughs> <laughs> who's also been deflated like the end of Hot Shots when they're doing the, uh, the blood transfusion? <laughs> oh, it's him. You can tell by the scars on the neck. Yeah. <laughs> It's, this is the funniest looking dummy I've ever seen. Because it says nine pebble stone court on his arm there. Yeah, but like it's the, the body structure is all wrong and like his chest is huge and very wide and like he looks like they, they sucked everything out of him. But that penis and balls are perfect, man. Yeah, holy sh That's the testicles that must have been in the effects. There it is right there. <laughs> Phil Brophy spent all weekend on those balls, so we got to talk about him. Here, we got the we 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 didn't have enough latex and everything, so we just made a cake shaped like a human. He's like, "What? Well, I've got this dick and balls I made." <laughs> Do you think he cast his own dick and balls? Maybe. Oh, he, of course he did. He's like, man, this really did some damage to my nether region, but I had to get it accurate. <laughs> and there's another scene I think they use it in um, with another porn scene. Yeah. yeah. I took the mold, bef but I didn't shave, so it was really difficult. Oh, God. Oh, Holy Lord. shit. <laughs> that would that hurt? I'm in, a lot of, I'm in a lot of pain. He's like, these are going to be in at least three scenes with what I put up with. <laughs> the pain I went through for this dick and balls. He shows up with this thing like, we don't need it. Oh, we fucking do do <laughs> with a diaper on before i did this i did not have a psoriasis down there and now i do so what's happening we're fucking using this thing if it kills me or not we're fucking using these dick and balls get a close-up on them which they do they sure do <laughs> and we're introduced to even though he's only in two fucking scenes my favorite character of the movie willie this fucking like uh this mortician slash uh, tech guy, I guess. He, I think he's just a mortician. Who is like, what What kind of fucking new age pathologist is this dude? Like, they go up and he's like, he's he's got hair like a fucking mad scientist. He looks like Clint Howard, the Australian Clint Howard. Yeah, and he's in like a tie-dye shirt, and he's like, he's completely, like, he's amused and tickled at like whatever's happening. He's like, oh, this guy's really healthy. This is what we were talking about before. But but his, his general reaction to everything going on is like, oi, interesting. Like, that's... <laughs> That's it, dude. He loves it. He's like, he's like, yeah, I, I did a, I did a test on his uh, insides, and there's some kind of corrosive chemical in there. And he's like, I'm telling you, mate, it's some kind. It ain't no designer drug from the '80s. It ain't no fucking. What does he say? It's like '80s something powder. He says it's definitely some of that '90s shit. Yeah, he's like, it's fucking '90s, yeah. man. Cognition <laughs> enhances. Well, we're talking about some '90s shit right here. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. 
uh, maybe, uh, like, why don't these cops, or whatever you want to refer to them as, like, he tells them, like, what this thing does, like, you would think they'd be like, okay, maybe that, uh, that pill factory was lying to us or something. But Hot Woman is hot. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, there you go. That's the excuse. Well, Hot Woman's hot, um, nothing's going on there, let's go. But this is where they do see on the arm the the Nine Pebbles Court, and that's where they're kind of like, okay, like, we need to go back there and investigate. And watch everybody die one at a time. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, this this one particular area is just a hot zone. So now we cut back to Paul, and he's fucking he's drinking more of this vitamin shit. Seeing this woman more, he's like, uh, 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 you, you know, there's an extra bedroom down the hall, showers that way. Uh, okay. And then she like disappears on screen. Well, yeah, she, he like leaves his house and like he's gonna leave, and then he goes to his mailbox and like looks in it and has this like trippy episode. Oh man, he walks back inside. And this chick's like, uh, uh, he's just standing there again, and and then yeah, he does. Th- he says that to her, like, oh, there's, you know, there's an extra room, and, and there's a shower down the hall or whatever. But then this is like one of those first scenes where she appears without the makeup, like the the beat up makeup, and she's like in this dress, her her Sigourney Weaver Ghostbusters transformation <laughs> in reverse. <laughs> Four feet above the covers. And he has, like, I guess it's like a nightmare, right? Where he's picturing her climb on top of him. And, like, we kind of get this whole dream sequence in pieces. Yeah, something about the gatekeeper and the key master. Some rib bones or some shit. Again, like, it's just Paul, like, tripping out, like, hardcore. But this is, like, one of the only people in the movie that we really hang out with for his trips, right? Yeah. Yeah, because the other people, it's, it either skips this phase altogether or we're not present for it. Either we're not present for it or it's very, like, fleeting. Like, we get a little bit of it later. Later, but this is like full on and he was doing like the Alka-Seltzer um, drink right yeah yeah the powder mix wouldn't you think that if you started feeling weird after you took that stuff you'd stop taking it well I mean <laughs> it's probably good he did because then he, he lived like two more days <laughs> no but he keeps taking it well right right I don't feel right but I keep taking this weird shit I got in the mail <laughs> I keep tripping face but I don't know why the fuck I'm gonna not keep taking these vitamin packets I keep getting <laughs> completely unsolicited with no return address on them he, he keeps having this drink dream where she's on top of him and uh, eventually you know it happens over the course of like maybe a 15 or 20 minute chunk yeah but she basically is like massaging his fucking chest yeah saying yeah you know you were just another man to me i already did this to 12 other men you're number 13 and they all existed in your mind with me i'm here to take your rib yeah and it's like i'm like are you actually throwing some religious shit in there now like right right <laughs> yeah i don't know you're adam honestly this is the part that pissed me off the most because I was just, really ah, I don't care yeah I, I wasn't into it the case she has is a cool visual but then she starts fucking rapping about that shit and it's like well, what are you talking about she removes this fucking rib like uh in Ace Ventura 2 when he's when he takes the fucking bone out of that guy's mouth. Yeah, yeah. But but Jenna, you're right. I was thinking the exact same thing. Yeah, some Adam and Eve ass shit. What also feels completely disconnected from everything else happening. Like it's the hallucinating is one thing, but then to have this entire trip where she's like, I, I'm a fucking serial killer who goes around massaging the rib bones out of men's chest because you all deserve it for some reason and blah blah blah. We exist inside you, and then he just dies. Yeah, you know, eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well it's not that simple. <laughs> he wakes up from a cold cold sweat a few times and then he's pretty much out of the movie until something happens later like he's seen like kind of peeking through his curtains a few times but that's it for his character essentially he even goes over to uh Shay and Brian's house and he like looks in the window with like a booger nose oh my god he needs to blow his nose right uh just real quick the the coolest part about that that trip thing I think like I don't like what she says but I like when she opens up her fucking like case and like all the ribs and stuff are like in these like oh yeah that was awesome they're all like fastened in there and I was like oh this is fucking sweet yeah yeah no i agree that seems like i just got that feeling like i i you could correct me if i'm wrong that like this woman was like dating the director like they were in that scene (laughs) together you know like it it gave me that kind of vibe yeah totally i mean i have no idea so is this a back to a pilot from my spin-off movie sure (laughs) get on the couch lady (laughs) but yeah so we, we start to learn a little bit more about cheryl and, I mean, her husband is... He's more consequential to her story than actually the movie itself. I mean, he becomes important in a big way at the end. Okay, I was going to say, he was the guy at the end, right? I yes. Guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But her whole thing is she's pregnant, Mm -hmm. and we find out that this Umbrella Corp (laughs) has been using her as one of their test subjects, and her and her husband just moved into Pebbles Court. Yeah. And they're they're testing the sperm on her, right? Like, his sperm was laced with 
that vitamin shit? I believe so, because she's not directly taking anything. Well, no, because she goes to Dr. Carrera and for her checkup, basically, to see if her pregnancy is going well, and she tells him, you know, oh, I'm having these weird nightmares, they just feel so real. So she's basically hallucinating in her dreams like the other guy, but they don't really, they might show it like once on camera, but it's mostly like a lot of implied stuff that she just tells people. Right. When she leaves the office, he pulls this fucking phone that he hides in a draw out, and you find out that he is working with Sean, and he's like, yeah, we gotta reduce the dose on uh, Cheryl. She's, uh, it's it, it's becoming overactive in her. Oh, that's right, yeah. I love, he makes this comment too to Cheryl. He's like, oh, babies are the ultimate? parasite but that's okay <laughs> and then he gets on the phone and starts cursing out his fucking business partner oh that character is fucking great by the way like <laughs> he just plays like the best two-faced fuck <laughs> yes yes he does oh he's great he's like spencer and sean is like uh wesker right <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i'll buy it at least from re1 I'll, I'll, that that lines up getting high on her own supply yeah i think so absolutely i think this is where the movie references a real life uh pharmaceutical fucking catastrophe yes yes yeah. in the he makes a reference says, this keeps going to be worse than thalidomide thalidomide was a drug used in the 50s um treatment of nausea in pregnant women it was used for to prevent a skin disease caused by leprosy i'll just read this blurb so you can get the idea of how bad this was in November 1961, thalidomide was taken off the market due to pressure from the press and public, and the public experts estimate that the drug thalidomide led to the death of approximately 2,000 children and serious birth defects in more than 10,000 children and about 5,000 in West Germany. Jeez. And if you're wondering, we're not going to post the video, uh, the pictures. We're we're not going to do it. No, you fucking weirdos. Like, <laughs> I mean, but if you're interested, look it up. Like, I got a feel for the people that survived this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, talk about fighting uphill your entire life because, Jesus. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, and like the one of the things I saw just in researching this was that these kids were basically born like with essentially like fingers and no arms or arms and no fingers, uh, you know, shortened limbs. Some of them didn't have limbs. They were born without them. And there was a lot, uh, a great deal of them did live like, you know, complete lives. You can look up these people online, but yeah. Uh, if you were wondering what the line uh, in We Didn't Start the Fire of Children of Thalidomide was referencing, this is it. And, and I guess, what is this guy's angle? Like, obviously he's in on this whole thing, but... Well, here's the thing. I think he actually wants the, res the, the good results. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, he wants he wants to be able to make a drug that can enhance humans, right. basically, or unlock uh, untapped potential. But Sean doesn't give a fuck. She's like, yep, I already made a deal with the drugstore, and I fucking, and, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if every, if everybody's uh, dying or whatever, um, fuck them. And he's like, but what about the cops? What about the fucking police? He's like, we can't put... He's like, oh, no, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, fuck the drug companies. Yeah, fuck the chain store. And then she hangs up on him. And then like tells <laughs> tells Tiny, uh, which which are these fucking jacked, steroided up uh, dudes that have tiny voices, which I kind of found hilarious as a commentary on steroids. And he talks like this. Sounds like Dobby. <laughs> Kinda, yeah, yeah. You think Dobby's in that guy's head, like uh, like Men in Black? Ooh, oh yeah. That's a scary thought. Imagine if Dobby was one of those guys, like he was jacked like that, and he had just a tiny head. <laughs> jacked Dobby. Dobby is ripped. Dobby is in shape. Dobby does CrossFit. Dobby. <laughs> Takes V59. Now try to stop me, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Charnetsky. What a bastard you are. Avada Kedavra doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter how strong you are. It's still going to take you out in one hit. Uh, maybe. What about Swole Kedavra? Dobby is swole. <laughs> <laughs> Dobby fucks. <laughs> he sure <laughs> Dobby's dick exploded. Master has given Dobby his vitamin supplements. <laughs> <laughs> Dobby is more is more machine than elf now. <laughs> oh God. No, I won't be getting your chicken anymore, Mr. Charnetsky. Body slams. Charnetsky. <laughs> oh shit, the elf's fucking huge. <laughs> Kicks down the wizard's door. <laughs> and, and then Gunner and, and Haggerty are over there like, yeah, uh, yeah, he's getting payback for that whole Char Charnetrix uh, uh, situation a few weeks back. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, this isn't our problem. You got beef with Charnetsky, you go handle that. That's fine. I'm gonna, yeah, you, I'm, I'm good. Shut up, you racist fuck. <laughs> I, I love Alfred Hooten, I mean. Y uh, let's be real. H Haggerty, if he got talked back to by Dobby, he'd be like, all right, enough of this, and just pulls out the Magnum revolver and just blows him away. No, fucking... Uh, 
uh, Gunner pulls out the chainsaw and he fucking takes him out. Oh yeah, there you go. Right in the right in the head, and then he comes back a third of the way through the ending. Right, right. Well, you know, Dobby's reincarnated and no longer is swollen. He's sad. Because, you know, he's got, it's a new body. He's got to start from scratch. <laughs> totally glossed out. Went right over his head. <laughs> That's happening. I love Photoshop. Anyway. But she she tells this guy, yeah, yeah, well, get get the shipment ready. We're doing this. And she hangs up on the doctor, and he calls, and then she calls him back a few minutes later after he, uh, he pulls this photo out of his draw of him and Pud mm-hmm. that we that we saw earlier and we mentioned a little bit earlier on his wall in his his uh, menagerie of uh, madness in his home. He doesn't. She doesn't call him back. She hangs up on him, and then he picks. And then the phone rings, and he picks up again. And goes, "Do not ever hang up on me again." Oh right, right. And then Pud's like, "I haven't called you in a wee bit, there, mate." And he's like, "Well, guess what? It's all happening again. Fuck you. Bye." We cut to Pud, and he's just chewing on this one of these uh, Australian. Aliens legs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, they're having fucking, yep, dinner. Meat's back on the table, boys. <laughs> <laughs> it's back on the menu. <laughs> Meat's back on the Barbie, boys. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> on the Garby. Looks like meat's on the blooming onion, boys. <laughs> <laughs> <It's-> <laughs> Looks like meat's on the Fosters. It's Australian, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it's 999 and Outback, boys. I forget if it's this scene too, but before uh, we cut back to the dock and put on the phone, as we were referring to him as Tiny, uh, this this bodybuilder type dude, is like trying to get like some supply from Sean, who, by the way, has been popping these pills like every time we go back to her at her desk. And she's like, yeah, no, uh, get the fuck out of here. And he like sneaks into the room when no one's there and, like, steals a fucking bottle of them. Yeah. I kind of love the Sean character because, like, there are people who are objectively evil around her who are like, quit fucking up. And she's like, no, I'm having fun! And she's, like, slamming pills. Like, (laughs) oh, yeah, dude. Like, her objective is not anything other than I'm here to have a good fucking time. Like, (laughs) that's basically it. Oh, yeah. And then we go back to Cheryl. You know, the through line we started talking about and got side-tangented into Dobby, the bodybuilder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so first she, like, she sees Paul, and he's got a, a runny nose, and he runs away. And then she sees um, the family with the... Um, Jogging man. Aerobics guy. And his two kids and his wife, yeah. Yeah, and he's like, he's like, all right, Cheryl, see you later. We're going to the fucking spa for a trip we'll never forget. Yep. And then they just fuck off. <laughs> and then and then, we, and then we focus on Cheryl's story. Uh, I think... I think Cheryl's story is, to me, the most horrifying one. Yeah, yeah, tell me about it. It's like the ultimate body horror, right? This drug essentially makes your body attack you, Mm -hmm. but this takes it to a different level because, like, the organism she's, you know, developing inside of her also decides to attack her. Well... Kind of, maybe. I don't know, I'm not even sure, like, I'm... I'm st- it's very nebulous what the fuck happens this woman. I think it's pretty straightforward. She, like, she starts getting pains in her stomach, and she just, like, falls to the ground. And it's not, like, super graphic yet, but you hear this thing come out of her, right? It does, it's just, like, but this thing just hits the floor, like, pfft. Like, oh, yeah. It looks like the fucking, uh, the alien frisbee disc, killer discs from, um, without warning. That's what this fucking thing looks like. Or, or you know, like a circus peanut popping out of an orca, or a uh, suckling baby coming out of a, a woman's vagina being dropped into a sewer, or, you know, let's, you know, go down the list of Movie Dumpster Season 3, The Year of the Fetus. Yeah, seriously. It's funny we mentioned Mortal Kombat earlier in this, uh, I think either before or during, but, uh, like... It kind of reminds me of when Scorpion's uh, yippee harpoon slams against the fucking tree and just explodes. <laughs> <laughs> Little bit. Placenta pancake, dude. <laughs> it hits the ground and in this fucking disgusting mess. And and she's still processing it, and the phone rings. Or no, she grabs the phone, and she calls the doctor up, and he's like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah, she's like, she's like, uh, Dr. Carrera, I think something's wrong. Can you come over? And this poor woman is in, like, complete shock. You know, does she have a miscarriage? You know, who, who knows what? I thought this thing scrambled away for a hot second, but I think it just literally evaporated <laughs> in, in the matter of time that she walked away and called this guy. No, no, it scrambled away. This thing is now running around the house. <laughs> oh, God. Like a little aberration. It's like... And she's fucking throwing shit all over the house, like, looking for this fucking thing. Well, I, I mean, th- how fucked up is this? I also like how real it is, like, her reaction, because she just, like, also, she's like... Is it normal for your placenta to come out before? Yeah. <laughs> and you're just like, that's exactly what you would say. Like, please calm me down. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um. Before I completely lose my shit, and Doctor Rivers like, 
Yep, you're good. I'll be right there. Just you, just hang out. Yeah, I'll I'll be right there as he hangs up and then calmly calls like the husband and then like definitely doesn't leave until like ten or fifteen minutes after everybody else, after the husband is sent there. He is in no hurry. Yeah, Carrera is very much like okay, I I got to cover this shit up. So right. he has every intention of like going down to Pebblestone and just fucking wiping, like making sure these people are dead and then like burning their bodies essentially because he fucking, he, yeah, he calls Brian and he, and uh, Brian ends up going down back to his house and this woman is in like serious pain. Her stomach is like expanding and stuff. Oh my God. It's, it's pretty gross. And she's like on the bed and she's like screaming and she like goes to grab this fucking like letter opener dagger thing that's like on the thing. Oh my God. And you think she's going to stab herself. And then Brian runs in and he's like, what are you doing? Stop that. Blah, blah, blah. He goes to fucking grab the uh, dagger from her hand and this fucking placenta jumps out of left field into this guy's mouth. And I'm sorry, but like as... Awesome as I love these special effects, this one was the worst one. Oh, yeah, yeah. They were just like, all right, you're going to take that placenta and you're just going to move around with it like you're jiggling it around. Yep, you're going to suck on that thing. Here's the thing, though. This placenta got a little confused because, again, <laughs> going back to the suckling, that thing do to run back into the vagina. This thing was like, first hole it saw it, jumped towards it. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's warm in there. Here I go. <laughs> And to not uh, make this any uh, less disturbing, uh, her stomach just opens like the, uh, the, that again, let's reference the thing, that part where they go to give him the... Uh, yeah, that's the part I think of when, when you said the thing is just... Like those tentacles. <laughs> yeah. Well, when the mouth opens up in his chest, when they go, clear! Yeah. <laughs> Bites the arms off. Yeah. That's her That's her stomach. Yeah, Norris's fucking stomach opens. It just opens up and it's just hollow. And it, there's just like hot air blowing out of it. Oh my God. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah, and her ribs have been like, deteriorates they're like they're just jelly flapping in the fucking wind like yeah is there supposed to be a baby or something like <laughs> what well, I, I think that's the placenta thing that cr that climbs in the husband's mouth i guess yeah we also get one lovely shot of this guy like on the ground and this thing like slurping down his fucking throat as he's like lying down yeah that was good that was cool so is the is the implication like this thing like filled her with some kind of noxious gas that made her blow up from the inside like yeah i, I who knows man i guess it affects everybody different kind of Again, just an excuse, like, how about uh, her belly explodes? Yeah! <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. the thing, like, remember, clear? <laughs> <laughs> and her ribs will go <laughs> in the wind. <laughs> She'll just fart out of her stomach. Well, when the cops get there, they're like, yeah, the husband did it with the knife. And I'm like... Did you see her stomach? There's nothing inside. But it's still, like, blown out like a bomb went off in there. Dude, it looks like something came out of it, not went into it, right? But didn't the, um, the doctor came in first, and then yeah. the guy, like, attacks him, and then he sticks him with some kind of, a uh, with some kind of syringe of shit in it. Well, that's later, because he goes after Paul. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. All the cops come, and they're like, yeah, so, uh... Huh, Pebble Pebble Court again, huh? Hell of a storm. Hey, Doc, you know anything about this? He's like, they're like, you know Paul Matthews by any chance? Where we've been looking for him. Ah, uh, Paul, Paul Matthews. Uh, yeah, no, can't can't say I can place it. Hell of a thing about that guy killing his wife, huh? Yeah, all right. Well, see ya, detective. Yeah, it might as well be a raw hex. Uh, raw hex. Raw hex red. <laughs> uh, where the cops were like, it's a revenge killing. That's the end of this case. And then <laughs> well, it's a revenge killing. I gotta go. Uh, they all leave, and then, like, Carrera's, like, creeping across the fucking, uh, across Pebble Court, <laughs> and he, like, goes to Paul, goes into Paul's house, and he's got a fucking whole syringe out. I don't know what he's even doing with this, right? Like, what is he gonna do? Like, make this person, like, OD and die, I guess? I, maybe sedate him and then take the body out of there so they can study it? Dude, it's glowing green. Herbert West is there. Yeah, it's like... It's like a glow stick. He knows that his time is limited because when they when the cops are all there, he won't tell them anything. They're like, "Well, the autopsy report will let us know." And he's like, "Ugh." Right. He has to get rid of the rest of the test subjects. So he goes into fucking Paul's house, and Paul's like leaning against the doorway, and he like 
turns around and his whole fucking face is like like the bottom of his face is like ripped off and he's like dripping boogers out of his fucking nose and shit. This fucking got me. I wasn't ready for this kind of visual and like I kind of let out like a ooh. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like speaking of street trash, I think this one was done like yeah. more disgustingly like <laughs> Oh, sure. <laughs> like as much as I love the visuals in street trash, like this one was just like dis- Well, like the thing is like it's because he's been blowing his nose, right? Yeah. Whatever's happening to him, like, made his the muscles so fragile, he just fucking blew them out. But, like, also his eyes are bloodshot, like, to the, like they're just red. It looks like a Harley Quinn baby. Yeah. And, like, his fucking, like, the bottom of his chin is gone, his lips are gone, his nose is mostly gone. Dude, he basically looks like the aliens from They Live, but it's his face. Yeah. Kinda. The big difference between this and Street Trash is Street Trash is, like, super colorful gore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Purples, yellows. It's so cartoony. Yeah, so it's, like, fanciful in that way, but this is, like, full-on disgusting yeah like there's something beautiful about like that kind of street trash thing where there's they're not going for that for this where they where they like explode in like yellows and blues and pinks and shit yeah exactly i've always considered street trash be like i don't call it a gore film i'm like yeah it's a splatter film but like i can't call it a gore film because it's so ridiculous with it's like it's color scheme and what they use for these people when they dissolve right yeah and in this case it's like holy fuck he has no lips yeah and those are boogers coming out of his nose (laughs) yeah and like his nose is just dripping and then he rips the uh, doctor's ear off. <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> Before he dies. Be- because it's like, they cut, they have him grab the side of his face, but then they cut away. He Van Goes him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he totally does. Oh, it's so fucking good. Give you the old McFully. <laughs> The old Mike Tyson. <laughs> Just go down the list. Well, because the cops basically... I, I keep calling them cops. I guess technically they are more like federal agents. They find Paul's dead body, and they find the the ear in their hand in his hand, and they're like, huh. And then they find the bottle with the sedative with the doctor's name just plastered on it. And he's like, yeah, what about this? And he's like, well, it's a dead ringer. It's just what the label makes this property of Peter Parker. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how we get all those pictures of Spider-Man? Then we get this amazing scene. At least I thought it was amazing because I found it kind of funny. Where the doctor's like, now he has like his head all bandaged up. Oh, man. And he's like driving down the road going fast as fuck towards the Umbrella Corporation. And he puts his phone to his ear, but it's like where the ear is ripped off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he switches it to the other side. And he's like, ah, shit. <laughs> Good sight gag. I love Carrera's descent in this movie. Yeah. Because, like, he's just like, I'm a doctor. And he's like, ah, shit. You know, this is going really bad. And then, like, all of a sudden, he's involved with, like, murders, like, actual murders, like, being on site where these things are happening. Like, instead of just staying at his office being like, I have no idea what's happening. I, what? The goddamn cops! Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a red letter day for Binky, okay? It's <laughs> He's not exactly innocent either. No, no, by by any stretch, no. I feel like it's easier to, de- to deny all this shit, though. Like, yeah, I didn't, I, what? I wasn't even associated with that. Well, clearly, you know, him hiding the phone in a drawer was his, uh, <laughs> the best he could do at the time. This is true. The cops come in, they're like, sir, why is there a cord in your drawer? Hey, there's a phone in here. Did you, was, were you hiding this? It's a very poor attempt. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. You just put some folders on it. We go to the uh, Umbrella Corp, this uh, spa, if you will, and we get the demise of the uh, athletic family. Oh, yeah, this is... This has some of my favorite bits. Especially the one with the kid. It's like, well, that trip was going to be ruined no matter what. <laughs> California games the movie. Yeah. There's even a joke here where when the family's being shown around with a dad is like, man, it's like a spa here. And and Sean like mutters to herself like, that's the point. Yeah, it's that's what it is. A spa, you fucking idiot. Well, well, she means that's the idea in the sense of like they're trying to put you into a false sense of uh, security. Yeah. Oh, and he's just like being a door everywhere that poor guy <laughs> i know i mean fuck his son but the rest of his family's fine in the scheme of things because you know they go they get introduced to uh the only other person that works here besides the bodybuilders mimi kincaid light yeah yeah right <laughs> the australian uh version of her yeah oh man she's gonna have like a night of the demons party tonight yeah <laughs> she's gonna try to sell you her uh, pet psychic books yeah <laughs> But uh, they immediately go for the food on the table. I think the only one that doesn't eat it is the daughter. Dude. Uh, which comes back later. She should have pissed on it, man. <laughs> I was to say that. <laughs> I wish they had just one cake. <laughs> yeah, right. You should have taken the advice of Gary and uh, Will Wheaton and the kid from The Stuff. Like, they all knew what was up. Yeah. <laughs> 
And Joshua. Yeah, there you go. Piss all over that that fucking deli plate and donuts <laughs> or whatever else is there. I must do it. Oh, rad. The kid, like, immediately bites into a donut. Are they just, like, spraying this, like, in aerosol form all over this, like, BJ's fucking platter? Probably baking it into it. They were like, oh, all of this food has, like, a specific chemical formula to it that's, like, like super enhancing to your body. So I'm assuming that they made it from that stuff right oh my god that's like that's like fucking harvey corman making beef jerky out of nuclear waste and munchies no literally look it was made by it was made by david warner in a subway don't you taint david warner's name with this (laughs) with four turtles and a reporter and a giant rat (laughs) and they just stuck ice cubes in in these delectables it takes time days and then and then toka and razor were much smarter than these uh these these idiots who just haplessly eat the food. <laughs> yeah. You think they're fucking walk- Token and Razor are walking around? They could be. Mama? They're in the next building over and like these people are like, oh, those fucking s- look at them rubbing their f- this and that our faces, their fucking mutations. <laughs> fucking mutant. Splice of Life is down the street. Christopher-, <laughs> Christopher Lee's there working on fucking gremlins. I mean, to be fair, like, Connor, to your point, like saying that these morons just eat it, like, to them, they are just at this spot, like this getaway, this health joint, and they're just kind of sure. eating some carbs before they're going to work out all weekend. Yeah. Oh, of course. There's morons because, you know, I have the knowledge of the audience, so I'm like, ha ha. Well, <laughs> yeah, sure. And the son is the only one. He wants to just go skateboard and, and camp out below the stars. And he's like, yeah, there, there's a there's a skate ramp I'm going to go, and uh, fuck you, sister. She goes, fuck off, weena dick. <laughs> ah, I hope you break your neck. He walks off, and this is, like, the first time you see the dad actually start to have the booger problem. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he's dripping at fucking dinner, and it's, like, ill. That's the part I cannot watch, like... Yeah, me too. Oh, it's the same thing. I have a thing with, like, spit and mucus and boogers, and I just... I can't do it. Yeah, me too. Here's the th- funny thing. Like, I work with animals, so, like, my job is gross. I have... I think... I, have, I don't know if I've told this story in the show, but, like... I was paintbrushed by a pit bull with its dog covered in, uh, its tail covered in fucking diarrhea. Oh, yeah, you have. Yeah. (laughs) I don't react nearly as viscerally to that as when I have to hold, like, a basset hound, and it's just dripping all the fuck over me. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, sure. When I was in, um, I was was doing Challenge of the Five Gauntlets, which is one of the movies I was in, and I had to have this part where I had, it was just chocolate syrup. And I had to keep it in my mouth and have it kind of like dribble out like it was uh, blood. And just the thought of that made me gag so much that we had to do like 10 takes of it because I'd be like. (laughs) Yeah. And when I uh, when I worked in a movie theater, the one thing I found frequently that would send me into a fucking sick frenzy was people's dip cups. They would fucking leave them behind. Okay. Uh, I hate that. I fucking hate that. I witnessed one time this guy's walking out with it. I'm like, bless you for taking that. And then to my fucking horror, he takes it and throws it toward the trash can. It doesn't land in the bag. It hits the side and spills everywhere. And then he looked back at me and shrugged and walked out of the fucking room. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. Pass, Connor. (laughs) Yeah. Throw up puke, all that shit. Spit, no thank you. And there's a lot of it in this booger mucus shit. So this kid fucking starts busting a fucking Tony Hawk on this fucking... Yeah. This half pipe. <laughs> oh man, that was so fucking radical. It's so good that I don't usually, I don't usually like cut out clips and just throw them up, but like this clip yeah. needs to be cut out and put up because he's doing like... He's fucking doing like 180s and fucking all this kind of like stupid shit and the way it's shot, it's so fucking funny. <laughs> Well, it's, you know, that donut, man. He gave him, uh, you know, the, the powers of an athletic person. Yeah. He's like, nah, he's a fucking showstopper. And he fucking goes down the ramp and does a backflip and fucking falls on his neck and just decimates his face and his body. Yeah. Breaks his neck. I like, yeah, it's, it's amazing. He can do all these tricks, but when he tries the, the, the extremely complicated backflip, he just dies. <laughs> right in the middle of the fucking half pipe yeah i also like how it has nothing to do with like anything else that's going on like they just wanted to murder this little kid someone realizes a kid in the movie to like i don't know is he taking the supplements like no fucking kill him this half pipe that's all of a sudden at this facility it's the best part dude he ate he ate some of the food so it's in his body again that's why he's able to do these tricks and also 
Keep in mind, his sister did tell him she hopes he breaks his neck. So there you go. Irony at, at, at its core. And and when she says it too, they just kind of like zoom in like, hope you break your neck. Dun, dun, dun. Wink. <laughs> and the mom like turns her head but says nothing. Immediately after this kid fucking gets decimated on this half pipe, it cuts to mom and dad. And they're like, you think you think Billy's all right? And he's like, he's like, yeah, he brought his tent. He's probably sleeping under the stars. And then it cuts to this kid fucking roll over and his fucking face is just just gone <laughs> it's just fucking a big mush mess oh yeah yeah half of it is just totally missing teeth are like in spots they shouldn't be yeah it looks like someone hit with a power sander <laughs> and he just dies and that's the end of it i also like like i don't just well, let's say this just remember that that kid died and and then just like watch the re- like we'll go by the rest of the scene do they check up on him at any point <laughs> No, if they do not. In fact, at some point, they just assume that he's dead, you yeah. know, because <laughs> later on. What's funny is that until we started talking about it, I had completely forgotten that, that kid died in a fucking half pipe and then no one goes to look for him. <laughs> no. It's the best part of the movie. They think he's camping and then that's just the end of it. Nobody has any oversight or like, and, you know, super <laughs> uh, supervision. So this kid dies and then this is where we get that shot that kind of breaks down the name Vimaville. Um, It's visceral muscular vitalization of latent libidinal energy. Hey, good job. Thank you. <laughs> so they take these fucking things to, to what? To fucking get their mojo going? Is, is that what we're talking about? It's, it sounds like a, like a both a health pill and a like a super, I guess, performance enhancer, like, a, like an ultra aphrodisiac. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're selling it at gas stations, so. Yeah, exactly. There you go. R- right on brand. <laughs> Yeah, as we find out. The dick pills, yeah. Mm -hmm. I also think it's kind of hilarious that this Mimi Kincaid stand-in is just, like, being tossed around by these bodybuilders. Oh, yeah. She's, like... (laughs) <laughs> she's fucking this one dude, and then he's like, hey, come on, you ready for another round or whatever? She's like, hey, fuck, you take a cold shower, I'm going to eat breakfast. Oh my god, here's that second porno scene. Oh, dude, this is great. He he turns on the TV, and he's like, start. he's, he's getting ready to rub one out. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and his dick just, uh, just doesn't stop growing. Nope, and then fucking Leprechaun pops out of it. <laughs> Oh, wait, you guys didn't see Leprechaun no. 4. Never mind. Next year. <laughs> Spoilers. Lubden's a mighty return, let's say. <laughs> His dick gets super hard and explodes all over the television. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, uh, you know, uh, the Fratelli woman's there in the corner like, <laughs> good form. She's with all the way up to her fucking elbow, she's in there, yeah. And uh, then we cut to where this woman actually went to the other muscle guy's uh, apartment, and it was the guy who had stolen the, the pills earlier this time. Yeah, he's... And he's on top of her really going at it. Yeah, he, like, takes these, again, like, he takes these pills, like, right before they start fucking. And, and, like, these dudes are on, like, V2 or some shit. He takes, like, a V59 and then, <laughs> and then like, immediately fucking feels the repercussions of it. And his O face is, like, some of the best on TV. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's so intense that, like, yeah, he has, like, a fucking, like, prosthetic vein popping out of his head. <laughs> he grabs her neck and, and it just, like, as everything starts to happen, just because it's... <laughs> He's col- he's convulsing and everything. She he just like snaps her neck. She dies, and then his back splits open and he collapses. Dude, she's into it. She likes being choked because she's like, "I'm getting off." Wait a minute. Oops. Well, maybe not that hard. <laughs> As her head fucking practically pops off her shoulders. Yeah. Oh fuck! I already forgot his name. Ah, David Carradine. Me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She wasn't dressed as Batman, though. No, Bauhaus just starts playing. David Carradine's dead. <laughs> and a crucifixation ecstasy. I've been choked by a guy named Tiny. Yeah. Doesn't this doesn't it cut to Pud fucking playing Tiger arcade games or something like that? Like the fucking handheld games? Oh my god, that was my favorite part. Like it's like he's playing and he's like, <laughs> and then like it dies like they always did. And then he, <laughs> he gets another rips. one. I'm like, did they just? 
just have a bunch of these on set and they're like, let's put this in the movie. There's just a box of them. I used to have a fucking Street Fighter 2 and a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers one. Could You can't play those fucking things, right? They last as long as they did in the movie. like Right, but like when you you, you ever actually like play one, like it's impossible. Oh, they're fucking, they're trash. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's the thing. He keeps losing and throwing them on the ground and opening up a new one, hoping that I guess he'll have better luck. He's like, hey, hey, hey. And then uh, the good doctor shows up, and he's like, yeah, I heard you coming from a mile away. It's my super hearing, because I used to test this shit on myself. Like, like I didn't fuck around with this like you, Doc. And you're a fucking douchebag, because you didn't do any testing on yourself. And he's like, yeah, well, I come for some stuff that's undisclosed. Oh, my, I, I love this idea. Yeah. That this, this these, these people, these degenerate bogans, as I've been referring to them as... Uh, he's like, yeah, you know, when, when I left, uh, you know, I changed the formula and uh, I never told you. And, uh, this is the thing you need so that it doesn't turn people into fucking puddles. Uh, yeah. Good luck. Here you go. He played that fucking long game, dude. He's like, see that red shit? That's a secret ingredient you need to stabilize the other shit. I think that's Granny's secret ingredient for the <laughs> fucking, for this barbecue sauce. For the barbecue sauce? Yeah. How long did he have it there, too? <laughs> Right? Just under this cup. Just been sitting on this until this day finally arrived. <laughs> I've been waiting for your call, mate. It's it's a ve- it's a decade long I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had three fucking disfigured children fast, and then I got my revenge. <laughs> I've been sitting here every day playing these goddamn video games, waiting for you to show up. Do you know how many Tiger games I went through to get to this point, mate? I love the idea that this guy just sat around like, one day I'll have my moment, and just has three kids, starts a family, he opens a business and is like, oh, he finally arrived <laughs> over there. He also fucking throws, it's the one that throws the fucking stone at the kangaroo and it like throws the stone at the can and it like flips off and he's like, what's this? The red shit. And then we just talked about that. But like, I love this because the doctor's just like, you're a real fucking scumbag. And he's driving away and he just starts screaming at the top of his lungs, the highway star lyrics. <laughs> and he's like putting his arms around his kids and they're, they're all singing it together. I love it. And then we uh, we get our climax where the cops have now gone into this doctor's office, found all his secrets, and are like, all right, get a helicopter. Yeah, get a helicopter. <laughs> That's my favorite part. And they come flying in. Finally, we get to use it. We get to use the helicopter. I was wondering. I was like, Does, can you do that? <laughs> Well, we paid for it. Let's use it. We get like one scene after another here where the fitness dad is in the bathroom and just the boogers don't stop coming. And his entire face literally turns into a fucking booger just about. Oh, dude, it comes out of his nose and he's like, it's just like spills all over the fucking floor and in the sink. And the mom's like doing the hair like, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, and the boogers are like cl crawling around in his sink and shit. Ugh. You ever have like, you ever been sick and like, yes, tried to like sniff your boogers up and you can't like. But you can't breathe sometimes. Oh, I thought you see. I thought you were gonna go in a different direction like that. I was thinking like if you had bronchitis and you get that big, bad, disgusting glob <sighs> out, and that's what was in his sink. Oh yeah, but imagine like it perpetually coming out of your nose and throat, and then engulfing your fucking body. Yeah, because that's what happens to this guy. Because she runs in and sees it, and has a, I gotta say a pretty amazing screaming reaction. Yeah, I was gonna say she's like scream queen in this movie. That was great. <laughs> oh yeah, there's even like it even cuts back to him and like like the booger sucks in and then go out again i'm like ew ew i can't i'm not gonna lie i didn't see that like i was like kind of looking away <laughs> <laughs> it's it's yeah it's gross and then uh the daughter like runs to to sean's office and like the chair is turned and i guess like at this point it's now affecting her well sean had like taken a bunch of pills before and started fucking like hallucinating a little bit mm -hmm. but now it fucking goes full effect i this is pretty amazing because she spins around in the chair and her entire face is in the process of melting oh yeah oh she is she is robocop melting okay she is like help me yeah <laughs> And then the fucking daughter is just like, what's going on here? Like, as this woman's face is melting. And fucking slaps her in the face. Yes. 
slaps her in the face, and then her head literally, like, melts into her body like a turtle. It fucking implodes! Yeah, because she, like, she slaps her, then she grabs her temples, like, because that probably just rocked every fucking cell in her head because they're all just falling apart. And she just starts screaming, and it just kind of goes down, and, uh, when someone finds her, like, her head is just hair and a puddle. Yeah. So the, so the daughter and the mom, like, jump in the car, fuck the dad, fuck the kid, they fucking drive oh. off. The- <laughs> right, yeah, forget brother. <laughs> Not e- no mention of the kid whatsoever. No. <laughs> they might as well have driven over his corpse. <laughs> <laughs> they almost hit Carrera, and Carrera's, like, completely lost it. He's, like, waving a gun around with no fucking ear. He's like, I'm gonna go in there. Dude, he fires at them as they drive off. And then that's when, like, the guys in the helicopter are like, there he is. <laughs> oh, there's Carrera. He's yeah, okay. Let's do it. And and we, the mother and daughter go to like some local doctor's office, and the 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 southbound shovel slayer is there. <laughs> and you're like, Doc, Doc, can you believe this? At the umbrella facility up the road, he's like, Yeah, that old radiation dump. Of course I can. Yeah. <laughs> The old chemical dump where they built those fucking B-O-W's? Yeah, of course. I know what you're talking about. So I'm like confused. Like, so is is the chemical dump the reason why people's bodies are melting? Or is it because of PUDS like experiment or whatever? Like, which one is it? I think it's the experiment, but I guess they're extracting this chemical dump from there. I mean, who knows? Right. I think it's just kind of the idea that that place should not have anything built there. To begin with. Well, then that's what you go. It's the food. It's the food. I think chemical dump is like, oh, that fucking, you know, that piece of shit down there. Like, maybe he's even using it as a term of like disrespect. Like, that's not a fucking medical facility. That is a fucking. Oh, oh well, yeah, 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 maybe. Yeah. That is a mad science lab. And then daughter like gets it. Like, oh no, it was the food. And then mom like has a reaction the second that's said and just starts shaking violently, and her tongue <laughs> expands out of the front of her mouth. This is so like funny. Like a fucking uh, Looney Tunes cartoon. It's funny because she like she goes to like grab the doc and the doc's like what i'm listening <laughs> and then this fucking tongue starts growing out of her mouth yeah this fucked me up that it, it's such a good fucking scene because you could actually like like with the spit flying out like <laughs> yeah no th- this fucked me up because in, in addition to spit like however this is done is really fucking effective because like there are shots where it looks like it's just it, it is visibly growing out of her face mm-hmm. and at no point do i ever get the disconnect of like that's a dummy head or anything like that and like and it's just it comes it's fucking it's like Venom's tongue. It's fucking huge. And then she just fucking passes out and dies. Ugh. And then that white, milky, goopy shit fucking puts it over for me. And I'm just like, all right, that's disgusting. <laughs> then we go back to the uh, facility. And, <laughs> and uh, the doc has, has found Sean dead. And, and the cops basically have him, you know, uh, have guns drawn on him. But, like, Carrera's in the in the office just, like, pushing the f- her fucking mushed head around with, her, with his gun. Like, yep, well... <laughs> I guess that's the end of that. Well, I guess she is she dead? Let me check a pulse. My fucking revenge is kind of foiled, so let me just poke around and you slop. The way they just, like, play these straight-laced characters, like, it's so no, stoic. Yeah. It's just so fucking good. Yeah, while he shoots himself in the hand, they have zero reaction. He doesn't even wince. What is that supposed to be? Is he, like, ascending? <laughs> Let's not say things we're gonna regret later. Yeah. Yeah, but like, did he did he take it himself or some shit? But I don't care. That guy's just rules. He goes to like <laughs> aim the gun at one of the cops, and they're like, "Yeah, don't even try it." And he's like, "Huh," just blows his fucking brains out. <laughs> And that's it. And then, like, there's a montage of the cops coming in and, like, confiscating all the vitamins and shit and shutting down the operation. And then they cut to the fucking police station. <laughs> this final scene. That That's when they just blow their fucking load. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Figuratively and literally. <laughs> I think we, I don't know if we mentioned it before, but, but, but Brian wasn't dead. They actually took him into custody and arrested him. Right. Because they thought he killed his wife. So... We go down to the police station, and he's like, oh, you got to come in here. To te-. Sam walks in, and Johnson walks in. And they're like, yep, job well done. Congratulations. Never mind that shit. Slime has attacked the building. <laughs> yeah, shit. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and all of them are, like, pretty cool about it. They're just like, hey, look at that over there. <laughs> this guy's throwing up all over your office. And there's just slime all over the walls, all over cops, all over uh, people that are just there. But, Jenna, you're right, though. Those two guys walk in like, oh, let me look at this. And, like, Every cop in that building is, like, shaking and covered in green shit. Yeah. And they're just like, oh, my God, what the fuck has happened to me? And those guys are like, oh, in this room, okay? Okay, we'll take a look. Was Bill Cosby here? There's jello all over the place. Here's the pisser. Everyone's, like, pointing their guns at this guy in the corner who's, like, convulsing and his head's, like, transforming into some kind of sloppy mess. 
And and Willie, they're like, get Willie up here. He walks up all non fucking chalantly with this tie dye shirt. I'm like, huh, okay. As this guy's head practically explodes. Yeah, he walks into a room that everyone has guns trained on, and he does it so by just like he just re- looks in the corner and goes like, "All right," and just walks in. This is weird because this guy's head doesn't really explode; like his cheeks pop out, and then he just dies. And, and there's another cop who's in there, which is why they're all freaking out, and that guy just faints. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like fucking windows in the thing, just like getting slopped around and thrown around the room constantly all the time. Johnson's just like fuck a doc, and uh, he kind of like looks at the body, really not impressed at all. He says he's got my fucking shirt on, is yeah. what he said. <laughs> yeah. I guess like all the shit that came out of him. I was gonna say, uh, him in that corner scene, I think like the only thing it needed was like him like doing the autopsy on the body while he was like eating a sandwich or something. I forgot what movie <laughs> that's in. Dead Alive. Or like body bags or something. <laughs> uh, I think that it's in body bags. It's also in um, Brain Dead. Dead Alive. Oh, is it? And Peter Jackson's like got his sandwich on fucking Lionel's mom. Yes. What do I look like? A goddamn doctor? I don't care. He's sensitive. <laughs> and the, uh, the movie ends in that convenience store. Our main detective goes in there for a little snack, and we pan over to the the shelf full of these fucking pills. And then the fucking music, the kicks in. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it's so fucking good. Also, that guy in that scene, like that in that last end scene, the fucking uh, gas station attendant's like, "Yeah, what happened to that guy with the fucking? He was drinking the detergent or whatever." And the and Sam's just like yeah whatever I uh, <laughs> got my aspirin see ya oh yeah because like, yeah like, that was a weird like callback I guess you'd say is like when they're like so what do you suggest we do and then the coroner's just like ah uh, maybe give maybe take some aspirin or something <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly <laughs> and then the guys go like can you give me some aspirin and then the the old guys just kind of like looking at him like ah rookie <laughs> yeah okay you, you got it and then cut to fucking credits. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird way to end it. <laughs> it's really strange because it ends like three times. Um, so where are we putting this? Uh, oh my god, I'm, I'm uh, I built it today. This is the top shelf. <laughs> oh, you just put it up, huh? Yes, this is the top shelf. Um, this is a fucking wild ass, fun, very exciting, horribly disgusting horror movie that checks specific boxes I wasn't really prepared to have like all checked at once. Like the music and the aesthetics are really, really my shit, and I love body horror. Uh, and this is excellent body horror because it's just like, hey, that's a gross, oh my god, what the fuck happened, uh, kind of movie. The acting's good when it's, when it's being cheeky and funny, it's really cheeky and funny. Um, and I like the structure a lot, the, the kind of like the pseudo-anthology thing really made it fly by at a really comfortable speed. It's also like only an hour and 20 minutes, something like that. It's really cozy as far as runtime goes, but... Yeah, it's just, it's it's a blast. I don't really know how else to say it. Like it's it's kind of mesmerizing, mesmerizing just how fucking gross it is. <laughs> and we make comparisons to Street Trash because like or a movie like The Stuff, we're just like you're kind of slack jawed, just staring at it the whole time, going like, "What are you gonna do in the next ten minutes?" <laughs> like. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this movie's awesome. I loved it to death. Uh yeah, shell for me for sure. Um, it's when I think of like the 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 end all be all osploitation film this is it i mean we have a little bit of death warmed up in there we got some dead alive in there it's like this cocktail of like death warmed up dead alive street trash reanimator kind of all jumbled up in this weird fever dream of uh, and it's almost it kind of at times it teeters on like art house but i'm into it um the cinematography's really good the lighting's really good and the fucking fx are top notch there it's so fucking great this is one of those film this this film is probably one of the only films that actually uh grosses me out like i can watch street trash and it's no problem and i can watch dead alive and it's no problem like i have no problem with like blood and and butchering bodies and stuff but man you get to that fucking spit or vomit or boogers and just i can't do it so it effectively makes me cringe um so bonus points for that and like connor said uh just piggybacking on that the fucking score is dope too um it all kind of melds together um melts together if you will yeah body melts together <laughs> <laughs> um into this uh weird abomination of a film and uh i'm into it yeah shelf for sure yeah absolutely a shelf movie this is a really weird fucking movie and i i don't know how else to really explain it in so few words if that makes any sense 
I, you know, when you guys mentioned this being an anthology, like, that just makes so much fucking sense to me. And, you know, it's kind of funny, you know, not that it's, like, the same kind of thing as the Willies, but it's it's interesting to me that now we've done technically two anthologies this season, and on the show in general. But, uh, w- with that aside, you know, the effects are really amazing. The kills, if you want to call them kills, I guess they're more like, uh, unintentional suicides uh, are pretty amazing. You know, I-, I like how the movie, even if it's not necessarily consistent with the way people die in this, it's constantly interesting. It likes to surprise you, and I like that a lot about it, and, uh, <laughs> always love a little Station. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. Exactly. You know, that's it, it's uh, seeing things from a different perspective. You know, obviously Peter Jackson being from New Zealand does that is that is that count as exploitation or is that a different thing? No, and I say death warmed up because that's not exploitation either because that's also New Zealand. Um, sure, but I I guess you could because New Zealand is like the Canada of. Australia. <laughs> Which we I think we have said in the Razorback episode also. Yeah, so while they're Kiwis, not Aussies, it still kind of counts, I think. That's what I liked about um, this movie was because I you see so many of these movies like in New Zealand. Yeah. And then it's good to just have like just a real just kind of Australian type movie. Like you can tell the difference. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. And uh, since it is on the shelf, ladies and gentlemen... Uh, we're going into the closet. In fact, I'm already in here, and I believe there's an entire puddle of sweat below me eh, by the end of this recording. <laughs> you sure it's sweat? Uh, well, let's hope so. You know, it's, a, again, salty treat. Let's just keep that joke going. <laughs> oh, no! Uh, dripping onto the Baldwin statue, and, uh, through this contraption that I received from GVD through nefarious means, as I've mentioned many times before, uh, I think I've got a little, uh, injection of this stuff that I am putting into the Baldwin statue, again, uh, just to clarify, because I don't know why I clarify this every episode, I've been talking about it for like five fucking months now, (laughs) now the Baldwin statue in my closet, made out of garbage, uh, tequila bottles, garbage bags, uh, you know, old, uh, cigarette butts, uh, the works. Fast food bags. Yeah, there you go. Some boogers. Ugh. I either inject it into them or I take it in pill form and pop it in the uh, proverbial garbage mouth. And uh, we, I, I don't want to know what this thing turns into. I don't know if it melts on the floor, goes through the floor. Uh, it basically puts a hole in my house. I'm not really sure. But uh, at the end of the day, it, it is the shelf. So uh, I guess I live with the consequences of my actions. <laughs> and uh, I guess that's about all I got to say. Check this out. So, I mean... I remember when um, Joe was like, oh, what movie do you want to do? He it basically went, what movie do you want to body melt? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, <laughs> Great choice. That was two years ago. It was. That was a long time ago. Jeez. And I'm so happy to finally get you on, but I'll, we'll get to that later. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and because I remember uh, kind of the way that I think everyone should get into was I was just on YouTube looking for a movie, you know, like a gross movie. And I saw this one. And I was like, what's this? This sounds totally up my alley. And and I fucking loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and I became semi-obsessed with it for like a week. <laughs> One of my one of my favorite uh, body horror movies of all time, for sure. Uh, it's funny you made it, because that's how I discovered uh, Antiviral by Cronenberg's son. I still have not seen that. I need to. That movie's super fucking interesting, but I was just in the mood for that kind of movie and was like, all right, what's like... What are some body horror movies I haven't seen? I think in like a, th- a couple of days banged out like Altered States, Antiviral, and something else. I can't remember what I watched, but I made like a whole marathon out of it. But Antiviral is cool. It's fucking gross in, you know how we said like, we were talking about this movie, like spit and all that kind of stuff, like really gets under our skin. Well, that's that deals with like sick people and their secretions. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And like it goes into like celebrity obsession and like because the whole point of the movie is like people are buying and selling diseases that celebrities get so they can infect it with them, infect themselves with it and then Ugh. have that kind of shared experience. And like I'm good. Yeah. And like people are eating cloned meat from celebrities. It's so fucking wild. Ugh, oh, my God. The social commentary on that is fucking fantastic. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's really nutty. Um, yeah. Everyone should check that out. It's antiviral. It's got um, uh, Caleb. I can't remember his last name. He plays Banshee in X-Men First Class. I just remember like 
So two, so I, I listened to another podcast with um, that does horror reviews, and one guy was saying, I the whole time he was just complaining about that guy's face. He's like, I just don't like his face. I just don't <laughs> like his face. And and then I was talking to my friend about this the other day, and she was like, Oh, I couldn't watch that movie. That guy's face was just pissing me off. <laughs> oh my god! I literally have not seen that movie because I'm like, maybe that guy's face will piss me off. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you know what? You know what's funny is I have one of those guys. I can't stand to look at Miles Teller. I don't know what it is. I want to hit him. Now it's in, now it's in your head. You're fucked. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh man. We also, before we wrap this up, uh, want to thank everyone for listening, like we always do, especially our patrons. And you can head over to that Patreon. It's uh, Patreon.com/slash/MovieDumpster, and sign up for any tier, and you get all these behind-the-scenes goodies. Uh, whether it be the $2 tier of a dumpster dweller, the $5 at the uh, time-traveling mutant, uh, clearly based on, uh, again, not quite our friend, but I'll refer to him as our friend, Daniel Baldwin. The anti-hero of the MDU, yeah. There you go. And uh, $10 tier? Join Dobby as one of our uh, <laughs> wizard house elves. You want some Vegemite Vitamix? <laughs> oh, yeah. Watch out. You get Vegemite free. No, you don't get Vegemite. But what you do get, it, you get some sticker packs. We get our sticker packs. You get uh, access to our commentaries that we're going to be doing soon. If you get that $10 too, you get a t-shirt, you get a pin, and the sticker pack, and the commentaries. Um, so, yeah. And for no money at all, you can go on to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review because that really helps us. Uh, as Sean always says, every episode, it gets us out of the uh, bottom of the dumpster and into more eardrums. Yep. And we, we usually, uh, I say usually, but we always reshare those on Instagram and uh, give you guys a little shout out if you write one. Yeah, love hearing from you guys. Just want to thank our patrons, Hunter Davenport, Brendan Lemune, The Autistic Gamer 89, Beyond Hope 777, Christopher, Jacob Chavez, Leonardo Roberto Talavera Barocchio. Gorlami. <laughs> <laughs> TM. Yeah, there you go. Amanda Tweed, Joe Has a Mustache, Dustin Elkin. Nick Larry, Dalton Bell, and Serge Mario. Thank you so much, guys. What was that, the autistic gamer? Yeah, yeah. Especially thank him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, we got one more winner to pull out of that Gramps hat. So make sure this is the last day or the last weekend, because I'm going to pull it this weekend when you guys, uh, when, when this episode drops on Friday, or it, it is Friday. <laughs> as of this, you know, as this recording is up. If you made it this far, then then you might uh, be on the lookout for a video of Joe pulling it out of Gramps's hat. Yes, because by this time I've already I've already pulled the winner for last week. So this is the last winner I'm going to be pulling this weekend. So make sure you get uh, your entry in, and all you have to do is go to your favorite social media app or email us at moviedumpsterpodcast at gmail.com with the words garbage you give away and you will be entered and we're going to randomly throw you in that gramps hat and I'm going to pick you pick pick that name out and Jenna do you have anything you want to plug any stuff coming up any new movies that are out that people should see that you're in or have worked on um just that pact of vengeance I know that we're going to be doing a patreon for that soon uh not uh a uh, kickstarter for that soon no not a freaking kickstarter <laughs> indiegogo there we go <laughs> There's too many of those damn things. <laughs> One of those things, yeah. <laughs> um, and we we tried doing that, but then, you know, the COVID thing happened, so we canceled it. So that'll be up soon. It's got John Mickle Thor from, uh, what was it, uh, Trick or Treat? Rock and Roll Nightmare, baby. Rock and Roll Nightmare. There we go. <laughs> And um, it's going to have Leo Fong, Low Blow in it. <laughs> oh, my God. I know I know Low Blow. <laughs> yeah. Can you get us an autograph from John Michael Thor? Oh, hell yeah. That would be amazing. It, I'm, I'm not holding you to it, but if you can, that'd be amazing. <laughs> oh, no, I will. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting one myself, too. <laughs> there you go. Where can people find you, uh, Jenna? Well, uh, I think the main thing, so I got... I got um, my Instagram, Zombie Futon. Great name, by the way. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and I think I have that as my... Um... Oh, no. And I'm Zombie Wasabi on Twitter. Another great name. A twofer. <laughs> Even better. A twofer. <laughs> I, had, I went by Zombie Tofu for a while, but I was like, I'm not vegan or vegetarian. I'll, I'll change it up. <laughs> yeah, mix it up, right? Don't want to confuse the people, you know? <laughs> Don't want to get any death threats. <laughs> Don't want to confuse my fans or anything. <laughs> <laughs> when I was like 13, too. <laughs> so, if anyone out there like that Robot Rock, uh, Robot Jocks mashup video, uh, one, thanks for watching it. That's probably the most amount of eyeballs that have ever been on something I've uh, edited personally. 
Uh, and two, I've already got one in the works for Body Melt, so... That's gonna be dope, dude. I love that video that you made. Look forward to that. So with that, you know, the barbecue month has come to a close, and, uh, and we'll be seeing you, uh, next month with the, uh, regular scheduled programming. Keep an eye out for that MD guide. It's gonna tell you what's coming up in September. Oh, yeah. So that's it. That's Body Melt from 1993, directed by Philip Brophy. Hey, everybody, if you want some more bad movie goodness, you can check us out at moviedumpsterpodcast.com. Subscribe to us anywhere you listen to your podcast, and make sure to leave us a five-star review if you dig the show, because it helps us get out of the bottom of the dumpster and into more eardrums. Yeah, and if you're on the social medias, you can follow us at Movie Dumpster on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor McGraw. And I'm Jen Exploding Dick Fryer. <laughs> <laughs> Cracky! Thanks for visiting the dumpster. Ever since your boyfriend foamed at the mouth and kamikazed into Pebbles Court, we have to rethink our position. How was I supposed to know he could handle that dose? Well, don't you see? That is the problem. The drug is still too unpredictable. But I have set up an exclusive dealership with one of the largest chain stores in this country. If we delay delivery of the first box ship... Fuck the chain store! What about the cops? We'll be right back.